Welcome to the final episode of Series 50, and also apparently our 200th episode somehow. Something like that, yeah, with, with bonus that. episodes. Yeah. <laughs> Love those round numbers. Uh, we had a fantastic discussion for this one. It was a great time. It mm. was, we thought it would be a short recording, and it was not shocking. I know. I know. Um, <laughs> but first, you have to suffer through this cold open Uh, But we can't wait for you to hear what we have in store. So let's go. Let's do it. Announcements. All right. First up, uh, we are excited to announce that we will not be taking a two-week break at the end of this month as we normally would. I know. Yay, more work. Uh, But instead, we are going to be releasing some answers to a bunch of your questions. Uh, Will it be two episodes? Uh, Absolutely. Uh, Will it be more than two episodes? Probably. Probably. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so stay tuned for those. Uh, we had a lot of fun recording this, uh, and uh, we hope you have a lot of fun listening and getting to know us better and and hopefully taking away some, uh, we think, uh, good advice along the way. Honestly, and, and also like a quick thank you. They were really thoughtful questions. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, most of them. And then also Jude submitted some questions, but they were <laughs> really thoughtful. And I, I think we had to we had to really put in some work to come up with good answers for some of them. So yeah, I thank really you. enjoyed it. Thank mm-hmm. you. Uh, exciting. We have new merch available. Hooray! Ah, I'm so excited about this. Uh, after four long years of waiting, mm-hmm. you can now own more than one C3 shirt. Mm-hmm. Uh, and thanks to a bout of very serious insomnia, <laughs> do we have great stuff for you. Uh, Our newest design is based off Series 41.3, where we created the Sims 4 eSports team. Yeah. Uh, When we played post-match interview, we thought we were hilarious in that recording. (laughs) I don't know if our listeners loved it as much as we did. We had, like, the best time. It was so much fun. And so when I got the chance to, like, start playing around with some potential shirt designs, that's where my brain went. Uh, So that's what I made. (laughs) Um, So that shirt is available in the One Shot Tee Public Store now, and you can find a link in our show notes if you would like to rep your Sims 4 eSports pride. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Another announcement is I have a new game out in the world right now. Um, It is a micro RPG that uh, where you play as uh, actual bees that can magically transform into uh, magical guardian bees. Uh, But you're on vacation and, you know, vacation from saving the world. Heroes don't take vacations. It's a nice, it's a nice time to unwind at the beach or wherever you want to go on vacation, and your arch nemesis just cannot stop. So what oh, are you to do? Oh, work-life balance. Come on. What are you to do exactly? So <laughs> it's a, it's, it should be a really fun uh, two to four hour game where you could create characters in minutes, and uh, I, I created my own dice resolution system for this. Um, I, I'm planning to make more games with this dice resolution system. Um, and I'm just calling the whole group of games powered by the hive, uh, because it's a dice pool mechanic, uh, where you, you build a dice pool and the more dice you have, the more, uh, interesting results you can get. So, um, I'm really, I'm really excited to see what people think about it. I I think it's adorable. I really want to play it. Um, and I, I did the graphics for it and (laughs) it shows, but... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was a lot of fun. You can do fun graphics for things. Like we, I made a t-shirt. You did. You me, you made multiple shirt I, designs, and eventually we, we will get around to posting those. Uh, yes. But we didn't want to. We wanted the test to see how the process worked with this one shirt design. Now we know, mm-hmm. and now we have a better idea what to do when we uh, start submitting uh, groups of shirt designs. So we'll yeah. we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll um, have more merch coming soon, and hopefully, you'll have lots more games. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, check out my itch page, uh, lordneptune.itch.io, um, or you can go to my Twitter at lordneptune and, and find my link to my various things there. So uh, a lot of ways to find it, but I, I love it. And uh, it sounds uh, adorable. Yeah, it's it's it should be a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun making it. We actually have one new review to read this week. We do after the show. You have to wait. Okay. Um. But we would love to be able to keep reading them because this is going to be two episodes in a row and that is a very exciting, cool feeling. Mm -hmm. However, we need your help for that. So please consider leaving us a review if you have not yet. 
Um, even five star ratings help us. Mm-hmm. Um, you can leave them on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Podcast Addict, or our Facebook page. Um, if you want other ways to connect with us other than leaving reviews, you can follow us on our many social medias. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are on Instagram at CreationCast, on TikTok at Character CreationCast, or on Twitter at CreationCast. Um, or you can join our Discord at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm sensing a theme. Yeah. Uh, also of note, on Spotify, you can uh, rate our podcast uh, as well if you are using the mobile version of Spotify. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah. You can't review it, but you can leave a five-star review or you a rating. You can let people know that it's good. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> and then the more that uh, people rate it, the ratings will actually start showing up, apparently. Um, so it'd be cool if you could throw five stars our way um, in Spotify, if, if that's the way you listen. So if you are listening to this the day of release, uh, one more big announcement. It is Miracle Monday. Woo, Miracle Monday. Um, all day today. Yeah, all day today. Uh, the one shot Twitch stream will be featuring a variety of superhero themed content. Also help raise money for Trans Lifeline. Uh, There will even be an AP featuring us, along with Jeff and John, uh, playing our Marvel superheroes characters uh, that we translated into Sentinels. Uh, So you can follow along all day over at twitch.tv slash one shot RPG. That is it for announcements. Please join us after the episode for our calls to action and a review. Mm -hmm. And also, I think, outtakes, too. Um, Yes. Maybe some. I don't know. I feel like we didn't goof around at all. So (laughs) (laughs) I literally have to cut out at least an hour and a half of outtakes just so we can't have this be a four hour episode. Okay. well, listen here. (laughs) It was good stuff. Uh, Anyway, enjoy the show. our discussion episode. Last time we finished mostly our session zero for (laughs) D&D. This episode, we are going to be discussing the character creation process. We are thrilled to welcome back Dylan and Haram of the Kill Every Monster podcast. Do you both want to reintroduce yourselves for everyone at home? And please tell us a little bit about the characters that you made last time. Hi. My name's Dylan, my pronouns are he, him, and I am the co-host, co-producer, and general keep on rails of the Kill Every Monster podcast. And the Responsible uh, Adult, I think, is the title you're looking for. Uh, <laughs> that's still pushing it a little too far. <laughs> order Muppet. Yeah. Dylan order is Muppet. Order Muppet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's fair. And uh, I made, uh, honestly, an as yet unnamed, because this is the part I struggle with the most with characters, uh, Orc cleric baker, Mm -hmm. uh, who's really like, and I think this is something we're going to talk about a little bit more in a minute. The role in the party is so wildly undefined at this point. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I don't think any of us have have figured out that we'll we'll see how this works. If it works, we'll see how it'll work. It has to. Sure. It's (laughs) DD. And I am Ram Vartian. I am the other half of Kill Every Monster. I am here with my good friend Dylan. Overstatement. <laughs> care about each other very much and A love bit. each other and are yeah. super excited to show up on shows together, yes. always tethered to each other's <laughs> side. And today I am playing Johnny Sex. And Johnny Sex is a elephant. I've decided what kind of elephant, by oh. the way. I've I've actually thought there, about this. There are two. There are lots of types of elephants. Mm-hmm. Don't pretty sure it's just African throughout and time. Indian. All yeah, throughout there's time, African there's elephants, Asian lots elephants, lots of different types of elephants. Uh, half a lumps. Yeah, Not there's really. shaggy, right? <laughs> well, mammoth. Shaggy it's a big. Thing. Yeah, shaggy big. So 
I am shaggy big. So I am mm. a shit, but it's all like super nicely combed. Like Ooh. it's all kind of in like waves and, and you know, patterns. Like like it's like L'Oreal from Fully head to toe. Flicked back mammoth. Amazing. That's right. <laughs> a pompadour going on here. Oh, yeah. like an Elvis mammoth. Yeah. Oh, all right. perfect. All right. I'm Amazing. Here for it. <laughs> and I play my trunk like a saxophone. Yeah. And my nickname is Saxophone. So it's actually Johnny Saxophone Girl. Sax. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Every one of these is a dagger into Dylan's heart. You can just hear it. <laughs> you just like see him slowly dying. With they, they call, they call him Johnny Two Sax. Yeah. Like, well, it's every good. Time. We'll do this recording in, in two sessions, and then Dylan will have some time to recover, and then we start back up, and Rob is like, what if I just start by beating you to death with a frying pan? <laughs> Look, every time I get Dylan to side directly into the microphone, we get a new patron. It's amazing. <laughs> Incredible. Anyway. Uh, Ryan, you want to tell us a little bit about what you made? My character is probably the most normal character out of all of us. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think that, like, this most basic, like, mm-hmm. rules is written D&D. Yeah, yeah uh, yeah, I, I have sure. a very clear role in, in mm-hmm. the party. Um, you know, I, I like, uh, I, get, I get a little tired often. Uh, you know, there's a... <laughs> tired? <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, made a, I made a Vroom Vroom rogue. Um, so... Uh, <laughs> So, uh, a vroom vroom for those not familiar uh, in the, the D and D system, which is probably everybody. Uh, it's a it's a sentient car, um, an organic sentient car. To be clear, uh, right, it right. is there is a vroom vroom variant that could have been yes. an awakened actual car. But, but no, we didn't want to get too off track. You know, we wanted to absurd. stick with the like. We wanted the, to, we wanted the world to allow for a car to exist. And yeah. Then yeah. Right. No. yeah. Having yeah. the sapient race of car people, that was much easier to integrate. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So uh, my character's name is Cat, K-A-T-T, which stands for Night Agents 2000, uh, because the rogue variant that I took was a Night Agent variant from, uh, I forget which supplement we use but it's in the show notes and uh this character uh it uh literally moonlights uh as a super spy because uh spy. depending on the phase of the moon uh they get different abilities and whatnot um, are any of them not looking like a car because that seems like it would be really difficult for a spy i think everybody yourself. doesn't look like a car except for me uh, well, there's probably yeah, but, other vroom vrooms around. Yeah, like, well, but like spies hope. have car, like spy car. But like you oh, would never expect the spy to be the car. You would be looking for a spy in a car. Okay, right? so this is a world where we're used to seeing cars. Okay. We should we, we should start. There. I, should, well, I think we that's one of the next bits. Okay. I think, yeah, <laughs> don't get too far ahead of yourself around. Fair enough. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> We'll get there. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I had a lot of fun making this character, um, and we'll, we'll see how it all fits together uh, in a bit. But uh, really, really proud of Kat and uh, and her contributions to this this group. Um, Amelia, uh, how about your character? Uh, so I picked uh, to play a digigod. So I'm actually a digital yeah. construct, mm-hmm. um, but also a god. Um, but slightly evil and t- trying not to be evil. So I do have um, one of the uh, the notes for my class or for my race is that you are a humanoid, but you're considered to be a fiend whenever it is detrimental for you. Yeah. So You're not bad. You're just coded that way. Right, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, and then I also am a sorcerer, the blood of the lost sorcerer uh, named Alexa. Okay, you might be so, bad. Right. I might yeah. be bad. Um, you, were, you were also touched by evil for your background, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Right. Right. So, but, but like, I'm, I'm trying to do better, maybe. Yeah. yeah. That's a good um, reduction. At least arc, pretending okay. to try to do better. Yep. To be fair, you have started out with some, you know, some, there were things were a little beyond your fault. You know, you really did. You weren't responsible for the whole touch by an evil thing, right? Right. So, right. okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're working your way back. I got gotcha. you. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not my fault. I started out as a as a virus. You know. Right. Also, <laughs> you can be like uniquely reprogrammed to be good or evil. Like honestly, like when we when we figure this out, it might not we're be not, that hard. It might just be a few lines of code. Right. <laughs> right. We're not going to get into the philosophy of if a person can actually be represented by codes. What are the ethics of reprogramming an <laughs> individual? Right. That, we don't need that. 
No, we need to have that conversation. There, Dylan. I think we're, we're starting to have that conversation. I mean, that, we can leave so, that for the fanfic. It's fine. You know. Well, I I think we can dive into what our world had become uh, in the in the fan fiction portion. So let's go ahead and dive right into a segment we are calling D twenty for your thoughts. D twenty for your thoughts. So in this segment, we like to talk to our guests about their thoughts on the character creation process, <laughs> um, how it relates in, to the system and to other games. But first, the number one cliche question of all RPG podcasts. Uh, please tell us how you got into RPGs in the first place. How did you end up here? How did your life come to this? I ask myself that every day. Uh, <laughs> in the only times, uh, I had a friend who like knew some people through a forum and they were trying to do like an online, uh, I think it was a Dark Heresy game. And I got really excited about it. It was my first exposure to any RPGs. I had like a bunch of books. I read through all of them and the book game never happened. Just fell apart immediately. Oh no. Uh, did not get off the ground. The real RPG experience. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I started off with a full understanding of what the hobby was. Uh, yeah, I was talking about it and never doing and it. never doing it. <laughs> uh, so one day, while well, me and this friend were walking around uh, talking to Alex Bohr, who was on Kill Every Monster in the Flump episode, and he was fantastic, even if he betrayed me. Uh, he, We were telling him about <laughs> this whole thing, you know, about how this game works and all that. And then he comes back to us two weeks later. Hey, I found a bunch of friends. We're going to try playing Dungeons and Dragons. I know that's not the game you were looking at, but I don't really get how this works. Do you guys want to help me run this? So we ran our first campaign, all of us kind of by the seat of our pants, just trying to figure it out as we went along as a weird little GM triumvirate. We're like mm. mostly... Interesting. It worked surprisingly well because like I kind of kept the the broad thing under control i ran most of the game and then alex was running a lot of combat and npcs and our our last dm was uh kind of a rules monkey like running the the lookups taking over where he had to <laughs> just anytime we had to double check a feat text because god 3.5 what a hellscape mm -hmm. for looking stuff up uh, but yeah, no, that's that's how we did it. Was we just ran every session. We went to the monster manual and we're like, huh, what monster do we want to make them fight next week? What level do they have to be? Okay, send them a message. Tell them to level up to level five and we'll make them fight this next week. We based every session around just what are we going to make them fight? Oh, that's why. Oh, that's kind of cool, though. It was it was, so a, it was, it was coherent plot. Three GMs and madness. one player? Or? No, it was three GMs and six players. Oh, wow. Uh, but like I said, one of us was just looking up rules, making sure we had that everybody kind of knew what they were doing. One person mm -hmm. was running the world and one person was basically running the people within the world. That That's seems like cool. a really good way to do a starter game, though. It is. To it not depend, especially in D&D, &D, to not depend well. on one DM to know all the rules and do all the things. Because yeah. like mm -hmm. we talked about in our last episodes, this game is really not balanced that way no. as far as workload. No, so like what a what a cool it, way to just sort of stumble into doing it. Yeah. <laughs> splitting it across things, and that's the other thing is like those are the loose slots, right? But obviously, yeah. we like bled between it. Where like if I had to double check something because I was going to make a call based on it, or I was going to make a move based on it, I would be looking something up, and Alex mm -hmm. would step up and start running the game, and you know our other friend Matt would be like taking care of some other side things or. Every once in a while, we'd have one player who wants to do another thing, and we'd just have a DM running with them for whatever nonsense little sidebar they wanted to do with just an ear open to the table to make sure nothing important was happening. Yeah. So we could pull it all back together. It works That's very really cool. well, but it's also like any game requires chemistry, right? If you don't yeah. like your fellow players, the game sucks. Mm -hmm. Your DMs all have to be on a common wavelength. 
Right. Yeah, yeah, that's one of those things that, like, as you're describing it, like, it, it sounds really cool, but it almost seems like the kind of thing that you have to stumble into because I think if I tried to build that, it would never work. Mm -hmm. Like, it would never, you yeah. have to have just the right people and just that, like, you know, I like think, a perfect storm to make it happen. I think you could do it if you were either one running from a module or two, like, fully ground up. Like, you and I are going to sit down, we're going to build a world and talk about how we want it to work and how the plot is going to go. Mm -hmm. But like that is way more time investment than most DMs honestly put in normally to run mm -hmm. it themselves. Right. Or that any so. of us have as adults. <laughs> yeah. God. No, we would yeah. run two sessions a week where one was the actual game and the other one was the three of us getting together and planning the game for three or four days from then. Oh, amazing. I just remember in high school, like playing every Saturday for like mm -hmm. four or five hours. And I just and now like. We can barely manage every two weeks. Like, I just like, yep. how did I do that? Mm -hmm. I don't think I've run a game that wasn't some form of content in two or three years. Yeah. Yeah. I have not. Adult I'd, is garbage. Yeah. I have played <laughs> one game in the last year and it was for content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. The good old days <laughs> when we did things for fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what about you, Aram? How did you get started? So uh, my brother and I had a babysitter. I was about eight or nine. Rafi was about six or seven. Lul was about 12 or 13. It was that, you know, where these old enough watch yeah. you for a couple hours during the day kind mm -hmm. of babysitter. Yeah. And we were not trouble, but, you know, energetic. And so we needed to be directed. And I think like the third time he came over, he, out of desperation, was like, okay, you know what, let's try this. And he had brought over his D&D &D stuff. And he's like, I'm going to run you through a little game. You're going to be a wizard. You're going to do this. Let's, let's play this out. And I was just transported and completely engaged in a way that I had not been about anything mm -hmm. up until that point. And few things since, frankly. It was a way where I could do everything I wanted to do right away, have, you know, it wasn't like a game, it wasn't like Zork. There were options. It was clearer. You could do whatever you wanted. But it was also like that because it was cool. It was building a world. And it was also I could act and therefore I could speak. Because mm -hmm. that's back when my stuttering was so bad mm -hmm. that I really couldn't string three words together. I couldn't go to McDonald's with my friends because I couldn't say quarter pounder. When they came out with that numeric system, phew, that was the closest I've ever gotten to believing in God because I can say number three, no pickles. But quarter pounder was really hard, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So I was struggling like just to speak. And then I would start acting and I wouldn't stutter. And oh, I could just go for, you know, minutes on end. Because and you not, lose that self-consciousness because you aren't you. Yeah, it's that. And it, there's also like the, all this science around like when we speak in unison, also when we sing, we don't stutter. There's mm -hmm. just these ways that speech plays in different parts of the brain. And so having that freedom for the first time to just be able to speak and express myself without the hangups, without having to stop, without having to, you know, struggle or be afraid of what I was going to stammer over next. Yeah. That combination just was transformative. I I have read so much and even just like in my experience with my kids and, and doing so, like seeing how much there is for kids and like learning and growth and stuff in role playing games that I really, really wish we used them more in schools and like education mm -hmm. and things like that, because there's so many benefits um, yeah. mm -hmm. that like apparently they've been doing a lot of studies and everything that in therapy with kids for various things, too, that it's like doing role play, especially through like D&D &D or something with rules mm -hmm. that are like kind of defined that it's worked really well for kids in a lot of ways. Oh, too. yeah. Um, and there's also like that rolling the dice, like the instant gratification of like I did a thing and then it happens yeah, and yeah. like, you know, there's just so much there. That it makes a lot of sense with therapy and anytime you can reframe an experience and then mm -hmm. re-experience it, but in, yeah. in a safer a place where you can kind of rewrite more control. yourself. Yeah. The yeah. role playing mm -hmm. is a perfect way to do I exactly that. I also think it's a really great tool for empathy. It's one of yeah, the mm -hmm. few things that we can do that we can 
very easily like slot ourselves into the position of another person and try and like live that experience in a way mm -hmm. that we can't in other games and stories and things like that too. So it's a really good tool for that kind of stuff. But I know even for me personally, getting to like play out things that are traumatic for me in a safer space where I have control over the outcome is huge. Mm -hmm. Also, it's explorative. Like I can't tell right. you how many friends of mine during the, you know, during lockdown for two years, right? Mm -hmm. They were like, I played a lot of games and it turns out I found out something about myself. I'm going to change my pronouns. Like so many of yeah. my friends, like, like they found time to explore in game. It was like, oh, wait a minute. That means something. And then was able <laughs> right. to apply it to the, I think yeah. that's amazing. Like I can play as somebody else. I can explore what it's like to live under these different pronouns as this different person to, you know, like to explore mm -hmm. queer romance and, you know, all of those mm -hmm. things that I can't do just – Wherever. I am going to put a, a but in this. There is a major uh, caveat. D&D yes. &D is very useful for exploration. It's very useful for stuff like therapy. The DM is not your therapist. Your group is not your therapist. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. love of God, if you've got stuff you've got True. to work through, yes. they're actually like deep seated. Like, do not take that to your table as a replacement for actual mm -hmm. therapy. No. For the Correct. love of no. God. And also, like, you know, like, do. This is part of a session zero, and I think mm -hmm. we've I think a thing that Ryan and I talked about in our session zero oh, yeah, episode absolutely. about um, you know making sure that your group is okay with playing out some of those themes because yeah. there are people that I'll play with that are like totally let's let's explore those things let's see mm -hmm. what happens mm -hmm. and then there are other people that are like no I'm just here to have a good time and play as a car yeah. you know yeah. um, we're and not yeah, all here for the same monsters. thing always a sad car <laughs> a sad not car a traumatized <laughs> car just a car <laughs> just a car not a yes not a trauma Traumatized, yeah. sad it's a car. Non cursing car. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Might be cursed. Cursed, but not cursing. No, no, right. they're happy. It's a happy car. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, definitely the kinds of things that you should talk out with your group and, you know, is not a replacement for therapy. Mm -hmm. um, yes. But I, I do think it has a lot of, of good opportunities Absolutely. for Absolutely. some of those yeah. things too. Every single time at work, whenever they say we should probably do some team building exercises or whatever, my first thought is, can we role play? Yeah. yeah. Can we get out some dice and some books and 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 play oh. some characters oh, and play God, yeah. for, during work for a team building? Oh, like, that's interesting. I should think about that because my boss is always looking for like team building things, and there's only like eight of us. Yeah. yeah. So it's like somebody should run us through. I've some wanted to su suggest that every single time, but like mm -hmm. I'm like, it, there's no way they're gonna allow four hours out of a day. You'd be surprised. My brother is like in this super corporate. Like, like digital signage, right, thing. And he's been like, okay, let's workshop this. So we've been working out, like, how do we go to a corporation and have, like, a four-hour thing or, like, a half-day thing, maybe even a full-day thing mm -hmm. where we use role-playing to help them get together, break out. Like, how do we do this and then sell it as a corporate package? And the oh, numbers yeah. behind it, like, as far as oh, professional yeah. DMing, you can add a zero as soon as you make it corporate. So whatever you're – so if you're pulling in 30 here, you can charge them 300. Yeah. And they're lining up to do it. Like, people are all – already doing yeah. it on the corporate level. Oh, yeah. It's, it's absolutely a thing that already exists and you just have to get your people on board, which makes it easier because you can then come and go like, hey, look, these are companies that are actually doing it and talking about the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. And then you can uh, make the company pay you more money. There yeah, you just go. got to be careful. <laughs> like, like, you don't want to go run role playing, you, you know, exercises for Raytheon, right? But for some people, sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Absolutely. So uh, what do you two look for in a system as far as character creation goes? Like what, what sort of pieces need to be there for, for great characters to happen? Hmm. So for me, the major thing I want, and this is going to come back to me attacking 3.5, uh, is <laughs> transparency. There are a lot of feats in, you know, 3.5 where it's not clear how they interact with like the fiction how they would come up and then it turns out that they're part of like a prerequisite chain so when you mm. want to build a character that can do x you need to take y z and like four other feats and you have to build it up right and when you're pawing through it and you're talking with the group you can come up with the most brilliant fiction in the world but if the game lies or misdirects you on how to make that occur mechanically you're screwed like that's, no that's the entire game. Like, yeah. So just 
present the choices that you want the players to be able to make in a game like D&D that is 98% combat. Tell them this is a combat ability. It does this. This is how it works. This is a ability that will not really work in combat, but it's going to be useful in these scenarios. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Don't put trap options in there. That kind of stuff. Like I just want to be able to build the character that I have in my head and know that it works. Mm. And to know that if I pick a choice, it's something that I'll get to use. Because there's nothing yeah. worse than like having those options being like, I picked this really cool yeah, ability. Exactly. Like, it's never going to come up. Jeff and John talk about it a lot in System Mastery. Trap options where something is explicitly not useful, mm -hmm. but they put it in the game for completeness. Mm -hmm. Where you're just like, why, why would I ever pick that ability there's no cause yeah. for that yeah mm -hmm. and it's it's so disappointing when you sit down mm -hmm. to a game as, like especially as a player who's never played that game before mm -hmm. and yeah. you're like i built this really cool character and it's going to be really great and you sit down and it's like nothing on my sheet yep. is useful here yeah um which is another one of those like it's called why you should have a session zero um mm -hmm. <laughs> but i've been there before like you, yeah. you make this really cool character that i'm like i've got this great idea and this great concept and then you sit down and you're useless i was having a conversation with someone earlier this week where i built a character in a pathfinder game where i was like i was the item maker you know i had all the item cre creation feats and then as you're playing you start to realize like the thing I'm good for is when we're told we got downtime, I'm a discount code. Mm -hmm. It's cheaper than having someone else make it. But now when we're in combat, I don't have the feats built up to be effective or useful. So like right. you've sort of trapped the character. Like I can't contribute until we're actually not playing the game. And then my contribution is to make everyone else better at the game. Yeah. yeah that stopped being fun immediately. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, I think, a problem with games like but this. But at the same time, being told, like, you're the guy who can make the f sword into a plus three flaming sword, that sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. It isn't. It's a lie. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, which is a problem of a game like this where it's like, oh, you can do all these things in downtime. Cool. But, like, none of the game is actually about downtime. About downtime. About downtime. Yeah. And also, if you play if you play D&D the way it's supposed to, quote unquote, supposed right. to be played with a grid with four encounters in between every long rest on, on that kind of scale where it's just combat, a little bit of text to then introduce you, basically box text to then introduce you to the next combat. Right. If you were to play it in that method, mm -hmm. then some of the game starts to make more sense, right? right. Like, okay, well, that's why all this stuff happens. But if you're actually playing a character, if you're role playing at all, you have to chip away at some of that because there becomes no room. You can't if you're running four combats, you absolutely do not have room to talk to each other or share mm -hmm. a campfire story. You have to pull away yeah. from that. And then once you start pulling away, the math is wrong. So yep. all of D&D for the way that the majority of people are playing it now doesn't work for the math that they've set up mm -hmm. for on for every monster, for every encounter for every long rest. Like it just no longer works. So if trying to adhere to that and saying like, well, I have to do this in order to play D&D, &D, you don't. You just have to understand the numbers just enough to make the numbers work and have consistency. And then you can basically do whatever you want. Yeah. Right. Which I, it comes back to a discussion that we, you know, we had in previous episodes is like what what still is D&D? Yeah. Right. You know, like yeah. how much downtime and role playing and all that can you have where it's still D&D? &D? Yeah, it's the ship of Theseus argument, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like if you, right. oh, it's nice because the game is modular. Well, how many times can you replace a modular piece before you're really effectively doing something different? Mm -hmm. Right. Which, you know, is a, is a thing that I, I feel like we <laughs> we really are going to have to pick apart here when we look at the oh, fact yeah. that we we did not really touch the the. No main book very much you know which you know is, is part of our next question how do you feel like using supplements for character creation um rather than just using the player's handbook kind of stacks up how did that feel to use like all kinds of unofficial stuff versus the real thing i like it i like using different things again it it, it allows you to find this character and hone it in. Mm -hmm. The only part where it gets a little tricky is in how do you make the world work? Like if right. you've got an artificer, yeah. 
If you're the only artificer because you're a genius and you figured it out, fine, that world works. Mm -hmm. If there are other artificers, now we have to discuss how everything's different and how there's a maglev train and everything. Like, yeah. Yeah. you have to, like, like, like the, the existence of Ryan's character mm -hmm. changes a world in some way, unless it's like a portal mm -hmm. opens and vroom vroom drives through. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. That's right. the only way to, otherwise, you have to radically but change this then, world. You have teleport spells and plane shifts. And if a portal opens and Ryan's character drives out, it changes the game, but later. Because yep. in early levels, yeah, sure, we can brush off that and, oh, he's the only one. But now when I hit, you know, whatever, 17th level wizard and mm -hmm. I teleport to the elemental plane of Vroom Vroom, <laughs> you know. Yep. Yeah, and then you got to fight the Choo Choo's. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. No, no, that's the, no, the elemental plane of Choo Choo is a different one. And yeah. if they ever cross, God help well, us the, all. The Vroom Vroom's main enemy is the Choo Choo. Yeah. Uh, right. and, and so they, they have to exist in the same See, realm, right? There's also the land the of thing. there's the land of neutral thwop thwops. Like there's lots <laughs> of places we can go here. And this is sort of the thing with looking at supplements is you have to be a little selective. Because right. sometimes so that's, the right. supplement comes along with a lot of fluff implications. And depending on like like Ryan mentioned, the choo choos are a legitimate thing that in that book exists and are the mortal enemies of the Vroom Vrooms. So if you integrate a Vroom Vroom directly from the book, God, I hate every sentence that's coming out of my mouth, <laughs> you have immediately, implicitly included choo-choos in your world, but you have to have a longer conversation. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to but, pull just this section and put it on TikTok. Yeah, <laughs> hear me out, though. Hear me out. You've introduced Vroom, the, your new Vroom Vroom Pal. No one quite understands it, but we've we've accepted it. We've accepted our new Vroom Vroom Pal, mm -hmm. and they've told us the stories of the trains. And then one night at your campsite in the distance, you hear a horn. You hear that train wheel, that well, we've you know that soft, comforting, mournful sound, but it's a threat and it's getting louder. That would be amazing. But this exactly. is exactly what we're talking about, right? Like you now have to change your world to yeah. account for the fact that certain decisions have gotten made. And it's a dangerous thing to do as the DM because now were I running this game and I came in, honestly, it's the mistake I made. I figured, okay, I can at least provide an anchor character and build mm -hmm. something relatively normal. Fairly mm -hmm. plain. And everyone went wild in orthogonal <laughs> directions to the point where the character that stands out the most, the character that doesn't work in the party, <laughs> is an orc one. cleric. Right. Right? You have <laughs> fundamentally shifted the world in so many different directions. Yeah. That, yeah. like, were I trying to run this, I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, you're the audience in now. You're, yeah. You know, you, if this is a live stream, right, or if this is a podcast, you're the audience in. You're the connection in all the craziness. You've got to play the straight man or the straight orc. Sure. But what I'm saying is that if the DM didn't know what we were all going to pick ahead of time, right. we yeah. would now have to break for like a month so that I can fully oh, write totally. a campaign because like I had no idea that this was going to happen. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. And, and so like – that's part of the mis I should say mistake. We did not make a mistake. I no. knew exactly what we, we were doing. We. Um, yeah. But <laughs> no if mistakes, you were going yeah. to run a game Just where you. you allow players to use supplements to pick character types, you need to say, yeah, within these confines from these one or two books, right. from you know of of this class type or whatever, or like even just the. This is the story I'm looking to tell. Like, you can pick whatever from any book. Find something that fits. Yeah. But right. it has to be able to, like, which also creates yeah. one of the more unfortunate power dynamics in a game where you look at something and you're like, mm, that doesn't fit the story I'm trying to tell. Can you go back to the drawing board? I had sure. an entire, like... It turned it nearly turned into an argument with a player where I was trying to run what I told up front was going to be a standard issue sword and board like very like regular fantasy. Mm -hmm. This was shortly after fifth edition came out and the class that he latched onto was the great old one warlock. Right. Which means now implicitly my world has to include Cthulhu. Right. Basically. And I'm left going like I uh because no. I know this is the sort of player who's going to want to integrate the patron into their story, which mm -hmm. means that now that has to feature heavily, which means whatever I was running has to be compatible, you know, 
It's yeah. that sort of problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then trying to tell it. Actually, we brought this up in the last episode. Trying to tell a player, sorry, the thing the core book said you were allowed to do. No, you don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That you're never winning that fight. Right. No. Also, yeah. like with Ryan, you've got the whole centaur issue. Like, yeah. we can't go to dungeon now. Yeah. Stairs. Because we got yeah. Ryan. <laughs> exactly. Right. I take up the whole hallway. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm right. I'm basically the the slightly shorter, you know, gelatinous cube. Yeah. Uh, and I can't go around corners unless you all meet in a tavern, except for the vroom vroom who is outside next to the horses because right. the door you is all, four headlights feet wide. through the window. You yeah. all meet at a drive-thru. Yep. Right. <laughs> yep. Well, I yeah. mean, I mean, that's the thing, though, right? Because like you know, centaurs aren't uh, like just player's handbook by itself you you can't just pull out a centaur as a player character but i i've seen it work in ap's yep. and, and whatnot and the the thing about it is is it's so ingrained in us that we are playing humanoids that yeah. unless it's mentioned you forget about it yeah. and i i'd be willing right. to bet like 90 percent of the players that are playing centaurs are playing them like humanoids like and they're sized. walking up and yeah. downstairs. They're climbing no, ropes. We're not and other gonna, shit. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of stuff you can They're climbing reel. ropes and other things. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot that you can sort of hand wave and like not acknowledge, but the more blatant it gets, right? Like, yeah, you can't you have can a centaur climb a, a rope. You, you can imagine a centaur climbing a flight of stairs and like maybe it's a winding yeah. staircase and you're there's a certain point where if you think about it hard enough, you're like, how would, could you pivot? Like, this is the sort of yeah. staircase I couldn't get a couch up. Right. Mm-hmm. And your butt is six feet away from your face. Well, first of all, in a world of centaurs, there'd be a lot more ramps. Right. Yeah, sure. There'd be a lot more ramps. Yeah. So let's so maybe, but still. Maybe we although, can just go ahead and assume that the world of D D is slightly more accessible. Yeah. yeah. For some I mean, like magic, certainly. Why not? But that's right. the thing, is like you, but they you still get can't into climb a rope. Yes. Yeah. But you get into those questions. And you start like, yeah, there's a certain point where you've picked deep enough and either we need to alter the world or just accept that, like, j- just shut up for a bit. Right. But if you go too far away, like I said, mm-hmm. the case of the vroom vroom. Mm-hmm. Right. Where you're like, oh, no, I can imagine, like, if the corner's too tight, like, horses are still like, you could bend a little right. bit. You could fit. <laughs> so you're made of an organic metal, I right. guess. Does, Do, does, can you does vroom vroom bend? Yeah. Can you, like, bend like, at the waist? You have right. wheels. What if it's really I, muddy? I mean, Can I do have facial stuck? expressions on my grill, so. Yeah. Right. Okay, wait. So <laughs> I'm picturing, you know, the Disney characters from Cars. That's right. what I'm picturing sure. when I think yeah. of you. That's yeah, what you playing, are, right? Yeah, okay. lightning. Effect- effectively, right. except for my eyes are the headlights and not the windshield. Right, yeah. which right. is, frankly, correct <laughs> and the right way to do it, Disney. <laughs> and my eyes can light up like headlights, so it's fine. Yeah. 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 But, but yeah, can you see it's, in fog? It's, it's this whole, like, we, we've got all these supplements that we just kind of mash together. And we're just like, well, let's see what happens. And and I personally loved it. And I yeah. love yeah. wacky. Like, this is not a serious campaign. No. Right. No matter how like, I love straight this and, for and, what it is. But yeah, it's no matter not, how straight and serious not. the story is, it's not serious when you think about it even a little bit. Right. And right. this is another but thing. That's that how you play your character. Not, that's this how you play your character, Dylan. You play it super serious among us. That's how it works. But this is a thing that doesn't get talked about that much that is important. This isn't a game that I enjoy. Mm-hmm. Like, there's right. a certain right. point where you've taken it so, like, balls to the wall ridiculous. Yeah. I know. I would never play so this game. Exactly, I, would not, right? I would not have any fun with this. Absolutely. <laughs> no, one shot and Rob and I are over here yeah. like, yes, I like, more. I'm super psyched <laughs> for the one shot. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? There, yeah, there's I nothing mean, wrong like, with enjoying it. I'm just saying, yeah. like, there's a certain point where if those expectations aren't properly calibrated and we were planning on running this game, it becomes mm-hmm. a very, very awkward situation where I get to this point and I'm like, do I do I just kind of power my way through it? But there's going to be a certain point where I'm just not having fun and I will Mm-mm. probably drag the game back. Or do I have to somehow find a way to tell my friends like, hey, listen, love you guys. You're wonderful. I hope um, you have fun, but this isn't for home. me. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. just not doing this one. I mean, honestly, I feel that way a lot of times about D and D. Though, when friends tell me about their D and D, because I don't like yeah. wacky games. I don't. Not really, that's not no. my play style. Is not wacky and weird and like crazy. You know, it's like like somebody was telling me about their game where they're like their character is like in a baby Bjorn being carried around by a giant skeleton or something, and I'm like, that doesn't sound fun to me. That just sounds like that doesn't. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds it, dumb. It's too far. 
It's mm-hmm. too much. It's too yeah. much. I mean, it's, it's, said, it's, a, it's an interesting concept walking around, right? But then you go, you go into town, and you're like, "No, carry me into the inn." I'm like, "No, see, pe- people don't like this. <laughs> like, I see you want to do this, but you have to accept that there's a reality, and that mm-hmm. people are going to react differently than you. You can't just walk onto a set every time you want and expect the world just to be a set. Like, if we're going to buy in, you've got to buy in. If you can figure out a way to make this wacky thing actually work in mm-hmm. this world." Great, do the extra work, but don't just dump it on us and expect yeah. us to mm-hmm. buy into your bad premise. Yeah, yeah. No, then that's I, that's sort of what I'm trying to get at. Is like if, if you can't set those those baselines, then you wind up with a nonsense premise. Yeah. There's another thing that I just want to bring up real quick. We accidentally made a garbage D and D game that I have no interest in playing. Right. We can restructure Ryan's character slightly. And this is a Shadowrun game that I would play. Right. Because the thing we accidentally built was a yeah. beefy caster, cool. a face, a hacker, and the wheelman. Yeah. Like, yeah. You make it a, the sort of thing where you can just do like a mental connection to the car or you jack into it or whatever. And it's effectively the same sort of concept. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, and this is, again... One of the walls you hit up against. So it's definitely like in how you skin it and like what you're doing. Yeah. And then the question is, is it D&D? What your world is. And that's the problem. No, it's now right? Shadowrun. Exactly. Right. No, it's now Shadowrun. Yeah. It's a garbage D&D game because it doesn't make sense. And you have to jump through all these right. hoops. It's and by the time D&D, you've put it obviously. into the right brackets, the, the right setting to make it work, you've stopped playing D&D and you need to change the system because D&D doesn't account for the things we're going to want to do in a game right. that has these characters in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, Shadowrun gives you some leeway. We were talking with a Carlos and the quote came up like, People, the average person will only ask why twice. If you give them a scenario, they'll only ask why twice. If the first thing is it's Shadowrun, there might not be a second question. <laughs> like that's going to cover most of it. That rule expects reasonable answers to each ask. Like, what's right. Ryan playing? Oh, he's a playing car. a sapient car. Wait, so did somebody invent cars? No, cars are just creatures. Wait, so there's so there's like a city then. Like, do they come out of eggs? Like, no, no, no. There's a factory. Hold on. So are these constructs? Right. Like, but if your first answer had been wait, shadow Shadowrun, you would have gone, oh, like, okay. No, he's, sorry, he's not playing a sapient car. How he's many playing dice does like he roll? A, <laughs> he's not playing a sapient car. He's playing a An hacker who is jacked into a car and just controlling it from a, a post. Like, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah, that's oh. that's Shadowrun. Yeah, that's Shadowrun. That's Shadowrun. Shadowrun. Yeah. Yeah. Sense. yeah. Oh, you're just playing. Sh- oh, you're just playing basic Shadowrun. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that in our Shadowrun episodes, um, didn't Mike McDowell just make Jesus? Yep. Yeah. yeah that's Liter- so, literal Jesus. Literal not Jesus. Like somebody yeah. that was pretending that they. <laughs> yeah. No, wild. he made Jesus. Yeah. That yeah. sounds right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, that sounds very on brand. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then um, there was a teacup pig. Somebody made a teacup pig. Amazing. Yep. Flying um, teacher, so, yeah, pig, yep. I mean, I think the answer, like, oh, it's Shadowrun. Just totally. I, Short I have so many fewer like questions covered. Yeah. about the mm-hmm. things that we did if you had said we did this in Shadowrun. Yeah. Yep. Um, because all of the things that we made would have been in the core book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, yeah, I agree. I think so much of whether you do or don't use supplements, what parts of supplements you use, how you use them, all of that kind of stuff really has to be a conversation that happens ahead of time. And it feels like so much work of a D&D game needs yeah. to be front loaded for it to work at all. It's got to be judicious choices. Yeah. Supplements are amazing and they expand what the game can do. But if you expand in too many directions at once, it's nonsense. And there's so much cool stuff out there that people have made that I, w- I want to be mm-hmm. able to touch. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's interesting because I, I was I was uh, going into this thinking we might throw out this first que- this next question because uh, it is like we talked about D&D. We talked about how the process of character creation, uh, you know, reinforces the feel of playing. Yeah, it's, it makes before. it very combat heavy, I think, was like yeah. the, mm-hmm. the answer but, we came to last time. Right. But but in this scenario, um, I have a very good idea of how this particular group of people would play and it would be wacky. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have we have definitely set a tone, if nothing else. Oh, absolutely. So 
That being said, we set a tone that is nearly incompatible with the game itself. Yes. Right. Like D&D is a combat simulator. Wackiness comes in through description and through fluff. Like we've done something in Amelia. I think you brought this up in the last episode. Like there's a certain or possibly the first episode doesn't really matter. Yeah, uh, doesn't. <laughs> but there's a certain point where like if you're doing it entirely outside of the rules of the game, are you playing the right game for yeah. what you're trying to do? Right. Mm-hmm. right. Yeah, which is my has always been my my big thing with people who are like, oh, just reskin it in 5e. And it's like, but there's probably or a game don't. that does it better. Mm-hmm. You know, like it doesn't yeah. the mechanics that you're using should reinforce the, the feel, of, feel the of what you're trying to do. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The mechanics should help tell the story. They shouldn't be just like a thing that you do and then also we tell a story, which is mm. what seems to happen in a lot of games where people are like, I love D and D, we're yes. telling this great story. And it's like, no you're rolling dice and doing combats and also yeah writing some mm-hmm. fan fiction like you're not <laughs> you're not no. doing both we are telling a really good story mm-hmm. in between the 3 hour slog it takes to do right. every room of combat mm-hmm. we're telling a fun little story in the hallway right mm-hmm. right no i th- i think that we we have set an expectation for what the tone of this game is going to be um Honestly, I think Ryan was really the one that set that expectation I, because I, I think when I it. look at, yeah. right, when I look at my character, like yes, I picked this like digital god and I picked, you know, this like sorcerer or whatever, but those none of those choices were overly like wacky. Yeah, they right. are distinct and, you know, not necessarily like mm-hmm. base D&D. It sets a tech level, but it doesn't change right. the tone much. Right. Yeah. And like, and most of the decisions I made were like toward the darker, more evil kind of thing, which is what I yeah. do. And, Ryan's and, character is the one that like flat out was like, I'm a car. Honest, and it was honestly, like, well, here we are, I guess. If there yeah. wasn't a car, it would have been a magical girl. And then we would have been much closer it in would have been, tone. And that would have actually become a lot more interesting because then what you have is a bunch of different varieties of chosen one. Yes. Oh, yeah. And you that create something a little bit like streamlined in the narrative, you know? Yeah. That would have been an interesting like council yeah. of chosen ones kind of like. <laughs> yeah, you've got the magical girl. You've got the like weird digital consciousness from the distant future. You've got the one that was just chosen by a regular god in a fantasy world. And the sax guy. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which someone again, always has to wander in. But that's the thing is you have to wander in, but then the story becomes like if everyone else is a chosen one and somehow you've accidentally wound up in the party, are you? Mm-hmm. Do we just not realize how or recognize yeah. what and that right. becomes a really interesting arc. But as long as we're gonna play a full campaign, we got like six years to figure it out. Yeah. Right? I mean the question too yeah. then is like, are you maybe a savant of some kind? That like right. that yeah. is your maybe power? my god's just subtle. Maybe music is just this far more subtle religion that eventually guides you down a path. And we yeah. and we learn to and we learn about it in a little different way later on. For Absolutely. a while I'm just the guy tagging along, probably the comic relief, even yeah. though there's a car. And then later <laughs> on, there's an anchor point. I think it's great. If you give like, you want to bring your DM every single thing about your backstory and here's the entire roadmap to like, you know, pull in all the emotional things. Here it is. Give it to them. Great. DMs love that. But if you're like, here's a bit of a nebulous cloud, feel free to fill that in later. That's yeah. a nice gift to hand over and it'll pay huge dividends. That's much more how I prefer to play. Yeah. Is mm-hmm. like, here are a couple hooks. Like, here's some strings you can pull on, some directions I would like to go. Mm-hmm. Yep. Help me figure out what happens. Yeah. Don't build an orphan. Don't kill the parents. It's, you know, I built a half elf and eventually, you know, dad started aging and it became weird and uncomfortable and mom sort of just left. But she's an elf, so she's definitely still alive somewhere right. and also still young enough that she is also adventuring. Right. Like, I don't know what happened. Maybe That's she has another self. elf family yeah. out there in Canada. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> we do have a lot of elves in Canada. It's yeah, just a thing. I've heard that. I've heard that. <laughs> No, I think it's I, I I also think that this is an interesting sort of exercise in what happens when one person makes a choice yeah. that changes everything. Because I've definitely mm-hmm. had that in games too, where it's like we're all roughly on the same page and then some person does something 
whether it's a big or a small character choice. In Ryan's case, it, it was kind of a big, obvious choice. Yeah. yeah. Um, but sometimes it is somebody taking that one sort of like, you know, I was chosen by my God to do this. And then the whole story becomes about that. Mm-hmm. Or they change the tone of the whole game. Um, and it's a thing that, you know, sometimes you can account for in a session zero, but sometimes sort of just happens. Yeah. And I, as a player, I've definitely been in games where I've been frustrated by that. Where somebody like makes a decision or is like, I'm going to do a thing. And it's like, okay, now it's the Steve show because like they have uh, sort of hijacked the story. Yes, And it's all about them. And like we're all just (laughs) along for this ride. There's and, also ways to do that for good, though. Like I, yeah. I, I know what you mean. Like, he, like there's a way to like sh- put the spotlight on you and like it's all about me. That's not the way to do right. it. Like, if you want a story thing, let's say you're like, okay, I want to make sure at this new table, my line and veil is I don't want slavery in this game. I don't right. want that at all. And how I'm going to reinforce that is I'm playing an orc. And now, every time we walk into a town, like I said, no lines of ills, no slavery, no racism. So now every time I walk into a town, you've got to treat me e- you know, equally so the world has to accommodate that. You have, I right. now have to think about the fact mm-hmm. that this is different from a typical d and world. Yeah. And we are actively now engaging with that. It's a, yeah. it's a nice way to kind of reinforce that. I'm not yeah. the center point, but I have yeah. – but with but but my character choice has reinforced an element about the world. Normally, we talk about character sheets for this game, um, well, for any game that we look yep. at. And one of the things we noticed with D&D when we first looked at it, too, is that, you know, all of these boxes are like, how do you hurt the thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to talk about with what we've made and with all of these various supplements and even just like in general experience for you. Do you think that there are things that should be included on a character sheet that aren't? Take a look at a standard D&D character sheet and look at how much room there is for the background. Yeah. I harped on this a little bit in part one, but like the backgrounds make an attempt at giving you non-combat options on how mm-hmm. to interact with sort of social problems. Right. Uh, again, a lot of the core book ones are kind of garbagey in that there's stuff like, oh, you need a place to stay. You're an acolyte. You can stay at the church. Right. Problem solved. We just short circuited the existence of a problem rather than giving you a way to engage with it. But like the the intention is there. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's the only real like personality bits that right. you get. And there is a weird little box that's like three lines and does not provide the space to enter this in, which like mm-hmm. explicitly tells you how valuable it is. It's the same yeah. for feats, despite the fact that, again, mechanically, feats are one of the most interesting ways to interact with the game. Yeah. Uh, You don't have the ability to write them on your character sheet. The game is very much pushing you towards all of those standard buttons of interaction. Here are your skills. Here's the damage of your weapon. Here are your ability score bonuses and your saves. And the the sheet is over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. You even have room for how much gold you have, though. Yep. So. (laughs) You know, it's it's interesting (laughs) because I think a lot of problems with D&D, really. If you really want, like a lot of problems with D and D, the things that the, you know, if you took it, they just changed the name of race. They're like, okay, well, it's not called races anymore, or, yeah, or they're, they're trying species. to shift it out. They're mm-hmm. no species. It didn't solve anything because it's still species first, right? That's yeah. still the first thing. Change it. The background should be first. Make mm-hmm. the background the first thing you pick. Make it the most powerful thing you pick. Put all the dots and all the things in there mm. and just separate that out from species. And if the background becomes the driving factor, then you're like, okay, this is how I was raised. This is the, these are the experiences mm-hmm. I had, not yeah. this is the mm-hmm. thing I am. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we talked about that with that um, with the Ancestry and Culture book that had come out last year, um, you know, that looks at like, okay, how was I raised? Where was I raised? Mm-hmm. You know, like these things determine more about me than mm-hmm. the fact that I am white or, you know, the fact that I am an elf. Um, what kind of elf? Where was I an elf? Was I raised by elves or was I raised by humans? Like those mm-hmm. would tell you a lot more about you and your traits and the things that you've learned than just like elf. Okay. Like I've got pointy ears, so I'm I have elf. more charisma. Like, mm-hmm. no, what? Hmm. And I, I think that D&D could do a lot more with that. Hmm. That is an interesting point, though. If, if we did the background and personality first and, yeah. and just reversed the process, 
like that that's a huge difference. It would give in you so much more of a hook for role playing and so much more of an invitation to role play. Yeah. I think. Because that's the thing is like with the backgrounds, they're in there and you can use them and you can use them for role play. But it's it's very much tacked on at the end after I've picked all yeah. of the other things. I've done all of the character building. Yeah, it feels and very then we much. Role play? Like, it's the it difference just... between saying like I am an elf. How would an elf be this? And saying that this is who I am. How does that change now? Slightly mm-hmm. being an elf. How does being yeah. an elf now flavor who yeah. I am? What it's... does that add to who mm-hmm. I am? Not not how does that define who I am? Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. part of what I like about sort of more point by systems where like instead of having levels and character progression you just sort of buy into your abilities individually yeah Mm because like the moment you say oh i'm an elven mage well everybody knows what that is everybody knows what one to 20 is and like Mm -hmm. you have to start coming up with the ways that you're twisting that to make that unique and your own but if i were to say like no no my character is that i'm a baker and i worked like i was part of a little military camp so i went through basic i can fight but then i was chosen by a god to go out on this higher purpose i could have all of the exact same abilities but the fact mm-hmm. that i couldn't just say half or cleric yeah and that's a million times more interesting starting yeah. with i was a baker and gives mm-hmm. you so much more to work with. And, yeah. and again, yeah. like for all of those people that, you know, talk about all the really great role playing opportunities you had in your D&D game, that's what you're playing with. Mm-hmm. And so for all of those people that want a role play heavy game, yeah. like it, it brings that to the front and says, OK, like now how does this affect my story rather than yeah. like, right. I have swords and also a family, I guess. Yeah. And honestly, if you if you put the background first and you want it to be it's still super important, quote unquote, for the people that are just there for the stats, right? Just there for the combat abilities and stuff. Throw that into the background as well. Like, yeah. oh, you were a fisherman, so so that means that you've got you know extra dexterity and extra you know this because of you know your your ability to work on boats and and right. blah blah blah. You know, yeah, or even just like. Pick your background first. Okay, now pick your ability scores. Same rules as normal. You get a plus two and a plus one. Tell me why those are different because of what you did. Mm -hmm. If you make, you know, oh, I worked in construction, so I have a plus two strength because I'm used to, you know, having to lug bricks around and like swinging a hammer, all that fun stuff. And my secondary stat is intelligence because I was the one who was in charge of just keeping track of equipment and making sure everything was in order mm-hmm. you know yeah yeah tell me why you have those like not just like yeah. oh i get plus one this because i'm a human like it's, mm-hmm. great i it's have a flat major, feet it's a major <laughs> improvement don't get me wrong that dnd has dissociated those bonuses from race at least it's no oh, longer 100%. a biological thing but now they are devoid of meaning they're right. a way to just pad the, your yeah. stats and skew it towards what you wanted to build. Now it's like, oh, uh, we, we don't really know what else to do with them, and we do need a plus one somewhere. Otherwise, the math doesn't work. So mm-hmm. which here, I guess. No, you don't. Just put factor them into the standard array. Yep. No, we can't change. We can't change this. What are you, what are you talking about? We can't change this. Just standard. move the numbers up a little bit. Add a couple more points on point by. Problem solved. Can't do that. Can't. <laughs> what are you talking about? Also, stop putting, in, stop putting in scores from 3 to 18. They're useless. Give yep. it give it to me on a scale of minus 5 to 5. There Let is the bonus keep going up if you got what? it. You, right? More like if you're infuriating gonna... than mm-hmm. I leveled up, I get a plus 1 to my stat. Hooray! It does, it does nothing. literally nothing. Nothing. Absolutely until worthless. I level up four more times and I get another plus 1 to that stat. Ooh, yep. this has come up like three times in different spaces. D&D no needs one likes to bring it. back healing surges because that's what they did with hit dice. And then they forgot that that's what they did with hit dice. <laughs> like <laughs> having that be like, oh, no, no, you have a healing resource that you can spend. So now I'm level eight. I have eight hit dice and this potion doesn't cause me to magically heal. It accelerates my natural healing so that on the battlefield, I chug this and I regain but it takes away and now I don't get to rest as much or any of that stuff. Those are great. And now it's a resource that can be managed and can be worked with. And that's how you make blood magic really work in D&D is if now instead of my hit points, my healing is the thing you're spending out of. 
Mm. That can be way more interesting. That's really cool. I feel like cool. that's a big problem with a lot of things in D and D. Though they're like, we changed this so you could do this, but we forgot that we did it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. like they just like they're like, oh, we'll change things over here, and then and then nobody bothered to like connect the dots and remember that it also is going to affect this thing over it's here. It's so complex at this at this point. It's just bound to happen. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't care how many people they add on it. I don't care how well they have it mapped out. Like it's too complex. They're going. Also, mm-hmm. there's a power creep. That's been happening consistently, sure. and that throws everything out of balance. Yep. It's just I don't I don't think it's possible yeah. with something this complex to keep mm-hmm. it. Yeah, not unless you again no. like would just start with a new edition. You'd have mm-hmm. to, yeah. which is you know I, yeah. I assume why they keep making new editions. I mean, at least it's not rift. You say that, but it, it's harder now. It's too because it's so complex. It's harder for them if they were to switch it over to sixty now. With everything with D and D Beyond, with Roll Twenty, with Everything that you know they are tied mm-hmm. to have contracts with, it's going to be a lot harder. I think they're going to. I th- I think no, it'll I be a slow rollout to five point five, mm-hmm. and then maybe two thousand forty. We'd see. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Two maybe two maybe two thousand thirty. We'd see a six C, but I think it's like mm-hmm. that far down. No, mm-hmm. I think that I think that's fair. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what what do we think is uh, one of the biggest flaws of character creation uh, using all of these supplements? I'm pretty sure I know the answer from Dylan at least. Um, and well, what is one of the best parts? Rom, um, you do this because I'm too obvious. Okay, so the fun <laughs> part is, the good part is that by doing these long involved character builds and really kind of like exploring, like what does this mean? How does, how does this affect the world? We have done a lot of the world building at the table already. We've mm-hmm. built several different worlds, in fact, for yeah. this group to work with. And that is a really fun character exercise that, A, helps figure out how we're going to play the game mm-hmm. and helps us figure out how we're going to react to each other and how we're going to play our own characters. The problem is it takes forever. <laughs> it takes forever. And if you don't have all the book lists, then it's harder for you and me. And it's expensive as hell. There are a lot of problems with the with the D&D system, but it's basically time and money mm-hmm. are going to be the, the mm-hmm. two big ones for me. Yeah. I, I think specifically with the supplements and Ryan, let me know if you call, called this one. Biggest flaw is that Aram is right. It was a lot of fun. Whoa. And we sat down and hold on because sometimes so is the he flaw says something. Aram being right or is no, the flaw we're gonna the get thing to that it. Ar- We're going to get to it. <laughs> Aram is right. It was a lot of fun to sit down and do all these world building exercises. But that asymmetric system that we talked about mm-hmm. means that we sat down and we had a lot of fun as players talking through different ways we could make this world work, different vague sort of senses of the world in which this party could exist. And now player five, who obviously in this podcast doesn't exist, has to go home, take all those suggestions, synthesize a coherent world in which a plot still happens. Because mm-hmm. this is the thing. When we switched it to everyone is a chosen one and Ryan played a magical girl, we immediately had a narrative plot, right? Oh, yeah. Right. The, the party implied a story. Mm-hmm. Just trying to make all of these characters exist in the same place is arduous. Trying to then tell a story that occurs using all of them now that they're all here, borderline impossible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, it's a lot of fun to do, and having all of these options and doing the character building exercise is great, but it sucks so much for the DM to then have mm-hmm. to go and make something of it, mm-hmm. especially given that, again, the way D&D lays out its workload It is one person who now has to turn this into a story instead of a pile of kind of funny stuff we said. (laughs) Right, right. Uh Yeah, Uh, I mean, this is one of those few times where we're coming away from this show and I'm like, I'm glad I don't have to play this game. Like, I'm I'm glad that this isn't a thing that I have to do. Normally Uh we walk away and I'm like, oh, I wish I could do something with these characters. That would be really fun. And this one I'm like... Mm-mm. Burn them all. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Burn it to the ground. <laughs> like, it was fun for what it was, but you're right. Like, I just, I, I can't see a game where this works coherently mm-hmm. and is fun for everybody and everybody gets, like, equal screen time, too. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I just, I just really feel, Ryan, love you, though I do, you have driven this off the rails. 
with that one choice is that uh-huh. like no matter what the rest of us do everything, everything is a is slave yeah. to that one decision that you yes. have made and and to be fair that was exactly my intent going into it yeah yeah no, no, you you knew what you were doing, and that's fine. Um, like I, I intended right, because to... we knew that there wouldn't be consequences. Yeah, we yeah, don't have to deal yeah, with that. Exactly. If you had exactly. played a giant or a troll, this would have been less intrusive than right. playing a living car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, exactly. And and that that was kind of uh, my whole point is like, if if you are the player that takes that really out there supplement and picks the the most like unorthodox character from mm-hmm. it you're gonna you're gonna have this sort of experience yeah and i, I so, wanted to showcase that here's a question your though it's gonna resent you <laughs> yeah right well, 100 100 right. that that yeah. they had, like, in, they're gonna resent you yeah 200 some choices right look at that yeah. that book had a ton Too of stuff pages. in there right yeah. if we had all gone equally out there because mm-hmm. it had things that were like you know butts for faces and stuff yeah like right. if we had all chosen to do something like that non D D, like would it have helped no no because i think there were there, certain cases where i think you're close enough to normal like mm-hmm. say the centaur case where you can just tell people like Okay, yeah, the centaur's got to go upstairs sometimes. It doesn't really make sense. The wizard's casting fireball, leave me alone. Right. Yeah. Uh, however, replace that sentence. Yeah, it's really hard for the uh, the car to drive up a stairwell, but also Aram's character literally has a butt for a face and communicates through farts. Right. And you haven't actually made it better you right. just made everything like you know what actually you're right let's talk about why that's true mm-hmm. yes i also want you to know dylan by assigning the, the uh, butt face character to me you have invoked that in the future there will be a time when i role play that now and i want you to know it's going to cycle back to right you here did it and to it's yourself. all your fault yeah, as long as you don't do it in a place where i have to deal with it i don't give a damn i just know that like the book also had like tree people and far? you know so Do like is it become like a, <laughs> you can have that one that's i'll allow it yep um you know like like you know if we all started mm-hmm. to be like similarly sized or you yeah. know like like at what level is it like so weird that it just doesn't matter anymore yeah. or is there not a point i think we'd all have to be cars like, mm-hmm. oh, like for this for this one the particular one to work, I think we'd all have yeah. to cars yeah exactly. i think we'd all have to kind of be in car world and then it's just car world it's okay, fine, literally but on the plane that's, that's fine. Well, that's fine that's too. Coherent. But, You'll be a car train. World. But does it even matter at that point? Once oh, we've just boat. replaced everyone, and now we're all cars and boats and trains, does it even matter? Or have we just right. basically rewritten the world? Except everyone's cars and boats and trains, but right. it all works the same. But now it's normal because we're all that right. thing. Now so, it's not. Yeah. Now right. It's not so weird. I'm just like exactly. wondering, like, how, like, if mm-hmm. what level <laughs> is it of like this is okay, this is okay, this is weird, right? This is okay again. I'm going to talk in math terms. Okay. God. It's about, it's it's a vector space. It's about direction, right? Mm-hmm. You can make it as weird as you want in one direction, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. We are okay. all cars and we're all moving on the same path. And it is so far away from the baseline, but everything is related to each other. Right. The moment someone moves orthogonal to that, you're moving at a 90 degree path on weird. Like say one person builds a car that is supposed to be able to exist in a fantasy world. And another pl- person has decided also this fantasy world not only has computers, but has sapient computers that are sapient computer viruses that are also wizards. Mm-hmm. And one guy is like, also, it's an elephant. Yep. <laughs> and this elephant can play yeah. the saxophone. And you're just like, hold on. But now you have to reconcile all <laughs> these things. And then Dylan's over here like, also, I bake bread. <laughs> also, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I'm kind of the worst of it because, like I said, these are all weird in orthogonal directions but i'm anchoring us to that zero point of no right. displacement from normal yeah i'm forcing a comparison to what things air quotes should be right right and, and now right. your character is going to toss me like baked alcohol good so i can eat them through my grill yeah that's everything <laughs> is terrible <laughs> right right so like you can go as weird as you want as long as everybody stays the close same to the same weird exactly okay. the more you go in different directions yeah. the more you have to make all of these things true at the same time and once yeah. they're all true at the same time they have to co they have to be able to mm-hmm. be 
Right. Right. No, I fully agree with that. I just think that's like a an interesting like sort of thought exercise to have of like mm-hmm. where where do these weird things fit in? Because yeah. they can be, you know, like because we we could all play, you know, the the world of cars <laughs> if we mm. wanted to, which we definitely don't. Um, <laughs> you know, and and it's Wrong. offshoot Shut planes. <laughs> um but this isn't what yeah. we were doing. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. like we weren't all being cars. When we came in for D and D. Even though even though World of Cars sounds like a lot of fun and we all would have fun playing it and we do want to play no, World we of wouldn't. Cars. We don't we didn't come no, in to don't. play World of Cars today. Is no, there a, right. I feel like Dylan and I are like playing one kind of game and then like you two are like maybe playing What's a different kind of game. What's the grumpiest car? That, that, no, I legitimately like I <laughs> shut up. It's gonna uh, be an Oldsmobile, right? <laughs> Honestly, our characters would work reasonably well together, you and me, Amelia, because mm-hmm. I built a cleric that also took, like, the battle master feat, so you can, like, I built someone who could rush in and tank a fight and do healing from the middle of combat. Yeah. But then also you have the holy angle and the grounded to, like, meet space, baker element, and then you have a sorcerer who is at their core evil like there's a lot of places where that overlaps and you can tell right. a story that invokes both those people mm-hmm. and then we have a spy with us let's not even in- talk about <laughs> the fact that they're a car yeah. right. we also have james bond in the party yeah mm-hmm. how do that how does that story come into this yeah it doesn't it doesn't mix right right it's, it is interesting, like, and and this is this is kind of uh, a fault of D and D itself, I believe, is mm-hmm. when you create, and and this has almost been kind of historically the way it's been done, is yeah. create your characters, we'll get together as a group, and then we'll figure out how it works mm-hmm. together, or we'll throw our characters at the DM, and the DM will and figure then be it like, out. Here it doesn't you go. matter. Have fun. Yeah, yeah it doesn't do matter. See you later, and, sucker. And then, and then nobody in the group knows what any other character is in the group, and we have to pretend to be best friends when we start it up. And we meet in a tavern, and we all get along fine, which Around to which I night. say, again, as a Why? woman, I am not leaving a tavern with some weirdo with a sword. Yep. Like, yep. I'm not yep. doing right. that. Exactly. And I don't know why every D&D game expects Unless the weirdo with a sword is a hot lady. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> That's right. You got me. All right, uh, fine. <laughs> but no, this is, Aram and I actually were talking about this. We had another recording yesterday and this came up. But these characters were not characters we right. built together. Mm-hmm. We built these characters sitting next to Correct. each other. Yes. Right. Which is totally yep. different. Yeah. Absolutely. We could have, like... In any situation where we intended to play the game, mm. like I roll my eyes because character creation cast, you're making a goofy choice. But at a table, Ryan goes, oh, I'm going to play a vroom vroom. And I go, no, you're not. No. Right. Like, right. Like, can we can we at least ground it right. a little bit more? Because how are we going to build any story that incorporates the sapient car? Please. Yeah. And, and the thing is, like yeah. in almost any other series that we have made, we have had those kinds of conversations where somebody says, I'm going to do this. And you say, oh, I was actually thinking this direction. And we kind mm. of work together on it. And like this one, we very purposefully were like, nope, free yeah. for all. And yep. it turned out bad. Dear listeners, really this is why bad. you don't do this. It turned out real bad. <laughs> yeah. It was fun. It was but unplayable. It's not playable. Correct. In fact, I think the next question is unanswerable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I don't>, <laughs> Dylan, <laughs> you underestimate us. No, uh, I'm sorry, let me, re, let me reword that. I don't think there's a good answer to the next question. Oh, for sure, no. Absolutely <laughs> no, not. Absolutely, absolutely not. not. I, anytime I say can't be done, I have a baseline assumption of competency to the oh, result. You yeah. know? <laughs> well, can and should are not the same, Dylan. Let me remind uh, you. No. Uh, hey, you hey, hey, don't knock my know. character's really bad attribute rolls. <laughs> oh God! I forgot that you don't even exist as like a competent spy car. car. I know. No. no. Yeah. Oh, it's a very bad. Bad. Yes. That's the bright side to this: is we're gonna run the car set- with the check engine light off. <laughs> <laughs> Say we did this recording. We built these characters, and I was running this game. I would be completely comfortable with it because at the end of session two, that car is definitely dead. Yep. And I'm just not asking you to make a new character. Right. You have not been invited back. Level four and 11 hit points. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one fireball. It's like literally dead. Oh, That's it. Gosh. Yep. Yeah. Right. Let's do this. Uh, next question, everyone. How 
does this story play out? Let's let's do our fanfic. Uh, what? I, please tell me about this group. How I'm, how do we I'm come just together? I'm very thankful that my character is not the elephant in the room. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how are you worse than him? <laughs> oh, you know what? You know what? <sighs> He is worse because he's like nice, and you like like Aram doesn't even you try to be likable. Like Ryan. And like Ryan is likable, like you you want to like you you want to like him, I don't you try. know. And then there's Aram that's just like <laughs> so. Dylan no. is so flummoxed because I don't try, and yet all of the guests, even I his like it. childhood friend, <laughs> like all turn on him. Sided yeah. with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I make no effort. Oh, amazing! amazing. <laughs> That's what makes it worse, though, is that like you don't even mm. try. It's, it's like if I was limboing, just like walking under like a six foot bar, just stride right through. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so the but, way we make no, this work, wait, is I've got the question call. becomes. Okay. Hold on. Sorry, go ahead. One second. My my guess for how we make this work is we pick who isn't present. Because if, who didn't show up this week? Because if I'm not there, the game starts to make a little bit more sense in a given direction, right? You now have yeah. the musician, the weird computer lady, and like we've gone full weird. Mm. It's yeah. cool. Uh, we omit Amelia. We get a new kind of weird that can get a little bit more tethered to reality because the baker and the musician in their weird mystical van. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still weird, but like a, a more grounded weird, and you can tell sort of more episodic stories like that. Uh, I think, God, I legitimately think if we take a ROM out, I'm still too far out for the whole system to work <laughs> between the three of us. No, mm -hmm. like you take out the vroom vroom, and like I said, the the playoff between Amelia's character and mine can clearly work because you've got a very direct holy mm -hmm. versus corrupted and then we've got sort of the neutral dude who is just right. kind of keeping the party <laughs> operating yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah we are just all playing very different games yeah. because like that's the thing is like i don't look at my character as being that out there like the, mm. the digigod no. part is is weird yeah um but it's not it's not weird weird you know what i mean it's like it's a construct but like mm. you could have it be magic instead of computer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it's not refluff. Here's it's, how right. we do mm -hmm. this. Um, okay, hang on. I got this. Oh, I've got this. Oh, oh boy. So, mm -hmm. A magical portal opens, and blasting through mm -hmm. it comes this car, this mm -hmm. strange, exotic machine that's never been seen before. Here comes skidding to a stop, almost crashes over a cliff. The door flings open, and a curly-haired, handsome man comes stumbling out with a fatal wound and dies there on the ground. The magic that has infested this car as it went through the portal splits its intelligent personality from its body. It's, there's still a mind left in there, but there's also this other mind that is now its separate thing. This broken, confused, scared, now two beings comes across the campsite of a simple chef who somehow sees beyond the differences, is able to provide <laughs> a little bit of safety and a little bit of space. But while the digital creature has a voice, this car doesn't. And while they're able to find safety and, sec and security as this new family, the car can't speak. And for many days, there's a little bit of sadness in this new group until one day, an elephant comes along with a horn of their own and teaches our <laughs> car how to speak in a new way. Okay, so that's terrible. And here's why. <laughs> <laughs> it just like blows right past any sentiment. Like, let me tell you why okay. you suck. So what you did there is you told a story that involves all, all four of the characters. D&D. &D. That wasn't a D&D &D game. You assumed immediately just an unexplained existence. You linked... Amelia and uh, Ryan's characters right off the bat. That's fine. I'm fine with that. Then you bring me in and you've created a party that could then do some kind of weird adventures. But you have no real explanation for what we would do. That is a D&D &D game in that. And then after you <laughs> skipped over the D&D &D game that would happen with the incomplete party, you use your character to do another story that isn't a D&D &D game mm -hmm. that completely resolves all of it, at which point the entire party is together, the story is over, and a D&D &D game 
still hasn't occurred or even We've started. We've introduced how the characters come together. This is our we meet in a tavern, mm. but it's better because it's an actual story that ties us together emotionally. And now a and d game can begin. Have we had to do okay. a lot of groundwork? But like, what are we Right. Doing. So like, me, what is this group competent well, enough no, to we, do together? And like, why are we still not. here? Why what? do I, as a computer, care well, about a anything? A family can do anything, Amelia. That's the answer. <laughs> See, this is what okay. I mean. You're just washing over the actual game that you're yes. trying to get to, and like, it works we can't for even it. Fit into dungeons, Aram. <laughs> it works for the nonsense yeah. story, right? Like, yeah. if you accept that this is absurd, we're bringing unrelated, just unintegrable party members together, and we're just going to play a D and D game now. Yeah, completely fine. But at that point, we've shown up to a beer, beer and pretzels game with our own character sheets having yeah. not spoken, and we just sit down yeah. to do the dungeon. Right? Let me let me lay something down for you, and I can I can turn this from a wacky D and D experience into something completely serious. And no, you can Okay, I don't believe you, but I'm willing to hear you out. Okay. Where I was wrong. <laughs> How is a uh, an organic sentient car to a group? of normal people in a fantasy world that different than a beholder first of all okay they're both weird and totally alien this sentient sure. car sure comes from the realm of motorheim according to the book right mm -hmm. and comes through a portal portals exist different dimensions exist in the dnd yeah. world okay so now you've got this vroom vroom, this this sentient car, who they wouldn't even think of it as a car. They would think of it as what a is monster. strange. Right. You're right. We should murder a it. creature a beholder. Yes. In yeah, it's so like a like a weird sort of look at this magical really, creature, really ugly beholder that can hold yeah. people inside of it to travel. That's what right? the holder yeah. part stands for. Exactly. Oh. So you've got this multi-dimensional like story arc kind of uh coming through here right you've got that that potential for choo choos to come into play and like be a frightening monstrosity i'm of just stuck on trait. like why did we not just straight up murder you if it's a D, &D game oh uh, and i'm like, a D, &D player i'm gonna hit it with my sword so that's if the dm introduces it right because we are yeah. talking about another player showing up at the party and describing yep. this i guess and what you're sort of talking about is the case of this is what my character would do which is a bad way to play right uh, yeah let's there make some go. allowances for our fellow party so no so, here's what my person would do i would also murder ryan well, what she's saying is that if there was a mutant beholder showing up you're probably going to attack it there you, you might not like ask yeah. questions first is what they're but saying what, what that's is not the, what my I character would do that is what amelia <laughs> would do if there was yeah. a mutant right. car <laughs> right. i would murder it yes if i was right. in carry i would try to sit not carry which one's the car one Christine. Christine. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. It was the other one where a lady's name was a stand-in for <laughs> Ultimate Evil for Stephen King. Right. Uh, but I mean, it, it take say beholders weren't a thing in the D and D world, and a sentient beholder pops into existence and is like, "Hey, I don't want to. I don't want to do harm to all of you. I just want to exist and do my thing and 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 like maybe get back to my home world. You know." That's 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 an yeah, interesting it is. It is. story arc. I agree with you. We're on the same page so far. Yeah. Amelia is Satan's Mac. Effectively. Yes. Uh, so that's well, that's sort of where that, that whole weird that, and orthogonal directions right. element comes in is like you're right. Any given weird thing in this campaign yeah. could work. It's making all the weird things so in this campaign. Together. So yeah. now Aram's character and Dylan's character, both your characters are like the quote unquote normal to a D&D mm -hmm. existence type characters. Yeah. So then now we have to explain Amelia's character as if the world can hold that sort of construct, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. yes, magic and, and potentially like computer systems might work. I, I mentioned uh, medieval neon aesthetic I really for like the setting, that. which I still think would be amazing it could be, it could be. can you imagine all the neon lights underneath armor come on it would be freaking amazing oh yeah. my gosh yeah, yeah. no everything is amazing <laughs> exactly i think like the aesthetic works certainly but like like i said there's a certain point where you're building a lot on top of a lot of other stuff 
And that's yeah. just that's my that's my root concern. I just like, I think it's I think if it's you're a going lot to try to, to build with real coherence, it's going to stress a lot. And trying to make sure that this world makes sense detracts a lot from being able to just tell the story. Mm-hmm. Make magic. I, I think it's, it's also a lot to like as a player to try and and grasp because I think even yeah. if you had the kind of DM that could come up with a game in all of this, that like. You as yeah. a player trying to absorb the world that the DM creates with this is like a lot of back lore and stuff to really understand and grasp. And because you, they, and we could also like we could tone your thing down by losing the digi part of it. Right. And if we just characterize your existence as like if find familiar broke away from the wizard, right? Which is a kind of interesting character, I yeah. think. But again, that means that we have to impose on your character, right? Right. That like means I've come with a concept and you've said, no, we can't do that. No, hold on. We need to adjust What if we just make magic so, yeah. electricity? What if we literally give electricity the property of magic? Then everything works in this world. Sure. Again, we're now pushing into territory where like, why isn't this right. shadow it's just, Yeah, it's just... Right. 13th century right. yeah. shadow run is what we're making. Yeah. yeah By the time you can make it work, the question becomes, why are you playing why D&D? Why are you playing d right. yeah. Well, I mean, and honestly, that's that's what the supplements are for, yeah. right? To to completely take the, the framework D&D. of what D- D&D is and to play a slightly, yeah. if not completely to point different, it in a different sort of direction. No, the, the thing is, that I think the purpose of a lot of supplements is I don't want to play D&D, but I don't want to learn new rules. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the thing. 100% valid way of going about it. Honestly, right. um, I I love the creativity. Uh, like, yeah, 220-ish new, uh, you know, species of characters that you can play as. Mm-hmm. A lot of them are wacky. A lot of them are wild. A lot of them could easily fit into traditional D&D world, whatever. But, like, that's a lot of amazing creativity, mm-hmm. and they're bringing that to the 5e system, which is really yeah, cool. Yeah, I think there's a ton of it. Like, and, I, and I certainly don't want to write that off, and I, I don't want people to you know, come out of listening to these episodes thinking that. Like, the, the creativity that people are putting into these games is astounding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was a supplement last year that was um, Neverland that, like, I mean, it had whole new character classes and, like, just, like, like all like this different hex grid and all kinds of like it was just really gorgeous um and there's there's lots of cool stuff being done Mm -hmm. and i absolutely understand that there is a cognitive load involved in learning a new game there is a financial aspect in picking up a new game and having to buy new books and i know Mm -hmm. people say like well if you're buying the supplements already why don't you just buy the new game like whatever i get that Mm -hmm. um but there is a lot of effort has to be put into learning a new game, finding somebody to run a new game, making sure everybody in your group wants to play a new game. Mm-hmm. So there's definitely something to be said for picking up supplements and saying, I want to play D&D, but I want to play in space. Mm-hmm. Cool. There is an option to do that. You know, like I want to play D&D, but I want to play in Narnia. Go for it. Live your yep. dream. There are also times where, as we have shown here, D&D might not be the game that we're trying to play. Yep. With what mm-hmm. we've built. Yeah. And that and is I also think, valid. I think it's part of why, like, we, we've seen a little bit, like, uh, from some of the conversations in the Discord for the channel, like, some mm-hmm. of the co- things that I've said haven't necessarily landed because we are coming from a place where, honestly, at this point, I know too much about RPGs. So right. I can recognize places where, like, oh, I think this is better served by this, and I can just pivot because I do know that system. Because there's but definitely a language around this, it, right? Yeah. That, like, I have learned the shorthand of a lot of things in RPGs that I can just pivot and say, like, okay, I can go over here and I know how this applies. It doesn't feel like learning a whole new thing to me anymore mm-hmm. yeah. because I have all of this shorthand. You know, it's yeah. like, okay, I know Latin, and so now it's easier for me to learn the other Romance languages, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's it's a weird analogy to the whole, like, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Right. But right. you have to also, like, extend the analogy a little bit to just be, like, there are things that are better to do with an axe instead of a saw. Saws are precision tools. Axe just does a splitting th- job. But if you right. only have an axe and you need a saw, well, I mean, guess we have to f- we have to make it work You're with You're going to make it work. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, we're just right. going to use the tool we have. 
And, and there are fine. definitely There's nothing like, wrong with that if you're running D and D because you don't have the time or the money and the investment mm-hmm. to like build up that knowledge or because that's what your what group you is run. cool with like there's like yeah. my brother is one of those people that like i have played with him before like i know he knows how to play other games he just, he just wants keeps to play playing D&D. D&D because that's what his friends want to play mm-hmm. that's cool and it's like cool live it up if that's yeah. what's fun for you and you want to try out different things or play it different ways or again there was a game that came out last year it was the spy game that was like a spy version of D um mm-hmm. but gear was done as magical items like it okay, was okay. it was a really cool mechanic and it's like there are there are ways to change it up and like do if cool I things do that, that i would have done it with spell slots instead re-skinning. but i get where you're coming from mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a fair way to build it um but there you know there are ways to reskin it that are mm-hmm. you know like interesting and new still mm-hmm. yeah um that aren't just like oh i changed the name of it and you know added plus two and whatever yeah um these are the uh the ogl glut of just another thousand feats that are plus one to your right acrobatics check right. yeah mm-hmm. there are definitely cool things happening out mm-hmm. there and like n- people are making new stuff in new ways so there's definitely mm-hmm. still things to be seen it's I, I think as we've proven it's just it's in how yeah. you use it yeah you know it's it's not how that you use you, it you use all um, at once yeah exactly <laughs> exactly right. and, and who you who you let <laughs> <Yeah>. use it <laughs> maybe yeah, well, um, yeah. <laughs> right and, and you have to also have to be careful because like um from just from picking the vroom vroom like aside from the the whole thematics of you know playing a mm-hmm. sentient car like mechanically i'm looking at this and i'm like this doesn't make sense mechanically like mm-hmm. why am i missing out on this attribute why do i have to miss out on the second attribute boost why do i have to miss out on that why is it only 40 feet per second or for per round right when you should be able to drive yeah, and go faster yeah, yeah. why, why can i only go there and it's like but you're a car I know, it's, yeah. it's, and why can i only hold one person inside my my it's chassis sacrificing too like, much for balance okay, okay, but to be fair we have right. no real scope of how fast people move because 30 feet in six seconds is sure. nothing mm-hmm. like I can run faster than that, and I am wildly out of shape, and I never did cardio, really, even when I was in shape, which is a bad Fair. thing. If you're going to try to get in shape, make sure you kind of take cardio care of your entire sucks. body. Okay? Yeah. I does. went to the it's gym miserable. like three times a week, and cardio, cardio is always sucks. I would rather... Part. I will do leg day every day Cardio's always to not have to run anywhere. Zone. But it's not... But for the first <laughs> 10 See, minutes, I get bored. I think that's the problem. Yeah. I get bored. I want the numbers like, to go up. I can't mm-hmm. like run for more than like a couple because I'm like right. this is boring. Yeah. This is Dylan so can't boring. Use his farm anyway. strength on the treadmill. I get it. No, nope. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no. That's in, in the defense of the the speed of the vroom vroom. Like none of the speeds in D and D actually make any sense, and right. they're all specifically in the context of you moving that fast during combat during while combat. trying to avoid getting hit. Mm-hmm. So like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll we'll let that slide. But I don't know, Ryan. You came the closest to selling. But trying it. to balance a car is a really good point, though. Like we mm-hmm. were trying to, yeah. you know, like when you add the speed in there, and you're like, okay, but the car needs to also go, you know, like not so much faster than the elf. Or you can right. just care yeah. less about balance. And I encourage everyone who plays D and D to care less about balance, as long as everyone's having mm-hmm. fun. We used to ask a question yep. about that um, early on in our in our list there was we had a question about like how do these different classes balance against each other and almost every designer we had on was like well they're not supposed to balance like Mm -hmm. they're not like why why do you care about that so like we took that question out because it was like after we got past D &D, everybody was like yeah it doesn't like it's not supposed to the only time you can actually balance classes Mm -hmm. is when all classes are supposed to accomplish the same goal right yes If all your classes are trying to do the same thing, you can measure how effectively each one does it. But when even in D&D, the rogue having expertise at high levels is wildly unbalanced if you're making a skill check. Yeah, Mm -hmm. because there's no way anyone can ever be like, say you got plus five from your charisma and you've got proficiency in deception and you double that because you have expertise. Okay, so now we're at a plus 17 to my role. Literally no class can ever tell that the rogue is lying mm-hmm. at their highest roll. Yeah. Even if they roll their highest roll. 
unbalanced. That's not balanced. No. But the rogue can only have a damage output if it meets all of these conditions in combat, whereas the wizard can be standing across the room and light everyone on fire. Right, like they can mm-hmm. sneeze and then everything's done. Yeah, yeah, so like balance is only meaningful when you can compare right. apples to apples. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Absolutely. Anyway, I think the closest to making the story make sense was what you gave us, Ryan, but that is, again forcing the entire party to forget what cars are at which point what was the point of you playing a sapient car again right, right. why did you bother picking that yeah well, yeah we're sitting there yeah, trying to make sense thing. of it because you're like oh that's not a thing that a car can do well yeah but also he's not really playing a car mm-hmm. and i don't know yeah yeah it's just a weird creature right yeah once it's a re- weird creature i mean just play a centaur it made more sense and it takes up the same <laughs> space come on it's true they're both large yeah yeah Normally, we talk about our advancement stuff now. Take it up a level. Take it up a level. But A, we've been at this for two hours already. Yep. and It's already really long. And B, I just don't really feel like that these, there's anywhere to go. I agree. No, there, yeah. there isn't a story at which point, yeah. like, all of it, we're in D&D. Mm-hmm. If you mm-hmm. weren't going to multi-class, then where you would go is more levels in your class. Right. Yeah. We, we already right. took and it up think, a level by going four levels in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I think that we, there's, we all picked like weird extra backgrounds. So like, it's just not, you just follow whatever it says to do, which would not be specific to story, which always bothers me. Like Mm -hmm. your leveling would have nothing to do with what's going on in the story because what's going on in this story would have almost nothing to do with each of our individual classes here. Even uh, for the bulk of it. Like, Ryan, I know you took a subclass out of a book. I'm pretty sure you did as well, Amelia. Mm-hmm. But, like, most of your abilities are still going to be the rogue abilities class. out of the PHB, yep. the sorcerer abilities out of the PHB, yep. and every once in a while you'll get the bump out of the weird book subclass. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, it's already in stone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Your, ba- your background doesn't matter. Nope. Your background for doesn't leveling matter. Up, your, your, your species does not matter mm-hmm. for leveling up. Nope. at all it's 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 yeah a so for me of... like for leveling up the only thing would be that would matter would be the Feet one selection. unfun thing that i picked from the php yes mm-hmm. would be yeah. like the one what's, what's regular your class boring. and subclass and that's that's what it boils down to mm-hmm. like you get some hit points and and some new that's abilities so lame. maybe it's so unsatisfying I and, and if yeah. you and if you gain a plus one and then attribute There's a 50-50 chance it will do nothing. It's part of why I hate odd numbers and ability scores, because at that point, the only thing left to do is you go into the feats and you find one that gives you a plus one just to round it out so you get the bonus. And then you can go back to waiting until every fourth level when you get an interesting choice and you actually get to go through the Mm -hmm. feats and find something fun to do. Yep. 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 At which point, just give me a book where it's all... It's all just D&D has so feet. many dead levels. They're so boring. It's so boring. It's I wouldn't so even boring. necessarily say they're dead levels. They're just locked in levels. It's it's just be, you're being told you are going to get this at this point and you can't have it yet. Mm-hmm. There isn't a choice that you're getting to make. There isn't a way in which leveling up reflects the story, like you said, unless every now and then you're carefully selecting yeah. A multi-class option, and even right. then, there that can really screw with things. Cause yeah, there, yeah, there's two points when you pick your class and when you pick your subclass. Mm-hmm. Those are your choices. Everything outside of that is you're in. down. It's... You're down this line, except for maybe when you pick some spells. Do it. Do it a step worse because they tied the feats and the ability score increases to your class. So if you get halfway through and you're like, I'm kind of bored, I think it'd be interesting if I dipped into Warlock. Mm -hmm. Well, now because you made that choice, it's going to be another four levels before you get to make another choice Mm -hmm. because you've now put off that ASI or the feat as the case may be. Mm -hmm. It it just, I don't know, it locks you in in a way that I don't find fun. Right. If you're not going to give me anything new to choose between points A and B, if I'm just going to be walking down the line you prescribed for me, why is this not just a single level? Mm-hmm. Right. Why isn't it clear, like in other games? Why, if, yeah. if you're going to be railroaded, railroad me. If you're going to put me on a path, make that path very yeah. clear. Mark it. Yeah, don't pretend to not 
do that. I think that's I think that's what bothers me. Why is that, does everybody like, start playing D anD D at level three? Mm-hmm. You start off at the first interesting choice you get to make, and the next level you get to make another interesting choice, and then the next level you don't make a choice, but you do get something cool as a result of your previous choice, and then six and seven are waiting for those abilities to kick in and hoping that they're interesting. And then in eight, you get to make another choice. Mm-hmm. Like there, like I said, just make this a five level game. You start yeah. at level three and then you get level five and then you get level eight and then you get level. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'll feel exactly. more like you actually get to make decisions and it's, it, it matters. It's really interesting that a game that feels like the whole point of playing in, in, if you just look at the mechanics it's is to advance and progress your character. The progression is so unsatisfying. Right. That is very right. unsatisfying, right? Yeah. I mean, it, why are we it, all still playing this game? It does. It like if you if you're a wizard and you hit that level five and you finally get fireball and I was like, yes, I've got fireball. I feel powerful. This is amazing. But and now I can wait until level eleven because the level th- four spells are pretty much all garbage. Yeah. Exactly. And and so so it's like this progression game that is just like it progression feels like the how they A treat slog. backgrounds. It feels like oh yeah, oh and you get yeah. backgrounds. Oh, mm-hmm. and you progress eventually. Oh, you gain you gain a level. Good for you. You're yeah. By the that. way, uh, roll your dice, get some hit points. Here's here's some toys for you to play with. Have fun uh, killing more monsters. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, but. That's that's only like a small part of what RPGs can do. And so now now you're in this whole like, well, if I'm playing D and D, I'm I'm generally playing combat because that's what the yep. game is, is for. for. That's a fun <laughs> note to leave out. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we do well, enjoy D and D for the record. We do. Yeah. That's why I we mean, do I, this. I always feel but... bad like when we talk about it on the show, I feel like we always are like, well, D and D. But I just I think my thing is always like there is a time and a place for it. And my mm-hmm. frustration is always this like square peg round hole. Yeah. Like yeah. not everything is is meant to be a D and D and D and D won't do everything. And for the things that you want it to do, it can do them yep. really well. Yeah. Um, it just, it's not all the things. And uh, Dylan has mentioned this before with our show. Our show, Kill Every Monster, is not a D&D celebration show. There are many, many, many D&D celebration shows. Ours yeah. is a D&D criticism show. Doesn't mean we don't love it. Mm-hmm. We love the show. But a lot of our show is about looking at D&D with a critical eye and reevaluating and asking yeah. questions instead of just accepting it for what it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. we've had a lot of people who are confused because, like, they're they're going like, and and reasonably so. They come into mm-hmm. the show expecting a lecture, an explanation of like how right. to use the monster appropriately in the game, and then we come in and are like, and here's why the game is wrong. Right. Mm-hmm. Like right. our base starting point is not education on D and D; it's education to D and D because D and D is incorrect. Yes. <laughs> but I also think that like conversations like that, and I, I've said this about myself with you know other things that I talk about too is like the there's a it has to come from a place yeah. of love yeah. that like you only know so much about a thing and like you only know to dig that deep and to look for all those flaws when you've spent yeah. so, so much we're time not looking at it. D&D. You know, I didn't like you're like not like D and D. I would just say D and D is a bad game on. that I don't want to play. Right. I would we're not, leave. Yeah. Right. And it, it like comes from a place of love because it's like, look, I love you so much. I want yeah, you this to be is better. How much, <laughs> like I want you to be good. This is how much I thought about you. This is how concerned I right. am about you. I've put this much effort into right. it. I am still here mm-hmm. because I think that we can work <laughs> through this together. We can make this like, work. Please. Right? Please. Like, I'm here because I Look, love D&D, you. D&D, I'm willing to yeah. give you another chance. Right. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, you only know that much about a game because you've looked at it so much because mm-hmm. you've spent so much time on it to be able to see. There's, like, there's a point where it's like, okay, I like this thing. It's cool. I've looked at it. I've mm-hmm. looked at it. I've looked at it. And then you start to see all those niggly little bits that no, don't work cracks. anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, that you're like... Oh, I've stared at it so long that I can, yeah, we, you know, yeah. I can we've been see in this D and D marriage for a long time. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, it's exactly. Just I still love you, like, but <laughs> and this is where people are free to disagree with us entirely. Like, you, we don't have to be on the same page for this one. But then it's just not becoming cinema sense. 
Right. You can right. see all the little niggly bits, all the bits that don't work, and then it's just make sure your criticism mattered. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, oh no, it was night when he entered the tunnel and it was day when he came out of the tunnel. Like okay, that's, a, was that... that's a continuity error. But like, okay, so if it but was still cares? night, would that actually change? Right. Would that matter to the story? Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. And that that's the goal is just hopefully the criticisms we're giving people are useful to them in their home game and mm-hmm. feel warranted as opposed to just walking in going it's goofy that the wizard can't cast a spell at this level yet <laughs> oh <laughs> that's annoying no i i think it's worth looking at and I, one thing that i i like about kill every monster too is like okay this is yes, bad please tell here's, me what I'm good at. here's what would make it better here's mm-hmm. what would you know like what would be fun is if we tried this right. instead yeah you know mm-hmm. i'd like to see it do this thing or mm-hmm. if it had this ability or whatever mm-hmm. yeah um which is you know what i i hope people get out of this too is that like you can play with all of these supplements you can just here's how to yeah. direct it here's yeah. how to make that actually the difference work is you, if, mm-hmm. like, if you're gonna tear it down you gotta build up if you're going to rip something yes. down to the foundation, you better leave something afterwards because people care about this. You don't want to just beat it up well, for no reason. I mean, if you and if you have a reason, right. then you should showcase what it is to do the other thing. Otherwise, you're just, right. again, just throwing bricks at windows. Right. You know, Propose a solution. Be a jerk. jerk. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Propose yeah. a solution. Absolutely. Yes. And, and play D&D. Yeah. And you know what? If... If having a, a vroom vroom and um, an orc baker in your game sounds like fun yeah. to you, go for it. Mm-hmm. It does not sound fun to me. I do not understand how to do it. If you can, go with God. Live your dream. <laughs> live your dream. Go with your many separate gods that each of your characters worships. That's fine. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. Well, this has been. A ton of fun. I, I have thoroughly enjoyed uh, both creating characters with with both of you and uh, and discussing uh, D D and and revisiting D D after four wow. years uh, yeah. of You've doing this. It's while. wild. It's uh, such a, such a fun uh, experiment that we did here. Yeah, this uh, was a weird. Opinion. I'm glad it worked out slash didn't work out, but it was a fun <laughs> little thought exercise. Yeah. Honestly, a hundred percent. I enjoyed our failure. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what so, matters, right? We had fun. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Who so, cares if our yeah, listeners, listeners liked any of it? Right. We had fun. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And listeners, if this turned out to be a, a slog that only we enjoyed, you know, you can always try Kill Every Monster, you which can. is you always know, their a fun episodes podcast. Are every shorter. episode is very good. Absolutely. Well, all in every episode, the guests are amazing. slash Kill Every Monster. Yeah, and look, look, in every single episode of Kill Every Monster, the guests are great. The guests yeah. are always amazing. They we, don't have any crappy guests on their show. Yeah, yeah we, we don't make mistakes like these two having us on the show. Exactly. <laughs> uh, well, on that note, uh, Dylan, Aram, uh, thank you both so much for joining us to oh. talk about Dungeons & Dragons. Oh, seriously, thank you for having us on. This was fantastic. I had a great time. It was time. a great time. Uh, can you remind everyone where they can find you online and what sort of things you're working on? Yeah, uh, I am basically doing uh, my, my PhD and uh, Kill Every Monster. And you can't see any of my PhD stuff yet because it's not done. So uh, <laughs> check out Kill Every Monster instead. There you go. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter at DJ Malenfant. Uh, for the record, not a DJ. Middle name is Jacob. Uh, and you can find the podcast at Wherever you find podcasts, Kill Every Monster, or on Twitter at KEM Podcasts. Also on TikTok find. now. Also on TikTok. Yes, also on TikTok. Mm-hmm. You can find me at Aram Vartin. You can find everything about Kill Every Monster at killeverymonster.com or again on Twitter at KEM Podcasts. Well, thank you both for sitting down with us. This was such a good time. Thank you to everyone for suffering through this with us. <laughs> um, we will be back actually next week, I think, with our Q&A. Right, Ryan? Yeah, it should yeah. be. Yeah. A surprise extra episode this month. If <gasps> not two. If not awesome. two. We'll see how much we talk. <laughs> we'll Who knows? see. <laughs> Call to action. Yeah, like that. This was a really good discussion. I, I loved it loved the conversation that we got to have. I loved um, being able to really kind of dig into that, like Mm -hmm. that sort of back and forth between like, I really like D&D, but 
Um, yeah. And the number of times that in these, you know, in these series, I've, I've kind of hated on D&D, admittedly. Mm-hmm. Um, but to be able to kind of dig in and say, like, no, I, I think it is good for some stuff. Um, yes. It just, you know, a place for everything and everything in its place, as my mom says. Um, <laughs> so I, I really think that we we got to hit on some of that stuff and some of those nuances and subtleties that we don't always get to talk about in other yeah. episodes. And it felt really nice to be able to do that finally. Yeah. And I, I enjoyed being the instigator for once. Yeah. Yeah. I do feel a little <laughs> bit bad. I walked away after our recording. And I was like, was I too mean? Because I was like, this is your fault, Ryan. You ruined it. I I ruined it on um, purpose, admittedly. So Yeah, but yeah. you did. So, mm-hmm. you know, I was like, was I too mean? No, I was right. You were right. Uh, because I, I did ruin it on purpose because <laughs> <laughs> that was the whole point of the exercise to right. to like, throw can all our, of this work? Mm. Yeah. Should all of it work? <laughs> yeah. Uh, who's to say? Who's to say? <laughs> but yeah, uh, it was, it Dylan, was a lot of Dylan fun. is to say and Dylan says no. I know. I agree. Uh, the the level headed one in the room. Uh, yeah. Along yeah. I with mean, you. I like after all of this is over, I can safely say like, yeah, I'm I'm with Dylan on this one. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> it was not good. But uh, before we let you go for the week, uh, we do just have a few calls to action. If you are listening today, Monday, May sixteenth, um, and there's still some time left in the day, it is Miracle Monday where Jeff Stormer is hosting a superhero-themed stream up on the One Shot Network Twitch. It will be tons of great content, all for a great cause to support Mm -hmm. Trans Lifeline. Uh, We have an AP on there today, depending Mm -hmm. on when you're listening to this. I don't know if it already happened or not. I don't know what time. Um, But you can find all of that over on twitch.tv slash one shot RPG. So please pop in and see what's going on over there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we also have some new merch available on the One Shot Tee Public Store. Uh, if you love Sims 4 esports as much as we do, uh, you'll want to check that out. Uh, four out of five doctors millipede agree. Sims 4 esports is amazing. Uh, we have one more review to read. It is the last one in our pile, so please consider leaving one over mm-hmm. on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser podcast addict or a rating on spotify did i get all of them and facebook oh facebook yeah okay uh but now i'm gonna read one um that we got from frithkin on Mm -hmm. podcast addict a fantastic podcast giving overviews of rpg systems through character creation i would have been happy to give 10 stars out of five if i could it's that good (laughs) oh thank you that is like a we rate dogs level of like 12 (laughs) out of 10 (laughs) I, I love, love it. Thank mm-hmm. you. Yeah, thank you so much for that review. Uh, well, well, that's it for our calls to action. Uh, thanks for sticking with us, everyone. We know this series was a lot of long episodes, um, and I promise not to overload you with outtakes uh, this one time. Uh, it's so because they weren't appropriate. They were not Ryan approved outtakes. <laughs> There's so many. I would have to be spamming the ah language button. Yeah, you would like not actually hear any of the outtakes. No. You'd just be like, ah. <laughs> Pretty much. So uh, may, maybe that content will find its way somewhere uh, mm-hmm. in the grand scheme of the universe. But, uh, you know, until we find a poem for it. It's not uh, here and it's not now. It's, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, you know, stay tuned uh, next week for the start of our special bonus uh, q and I guess, series at this point. Yeah, it's going to have to be. <laughs> You, you submitted too many questions, dear listeners, and now it's it, got to be several episodes. And you were going to have a week of, off from us, but now you don't get one. <laughs> yep. you, you did it to yourselves. You did it to yourselves, uh, but you also did it to us, and we appreciate it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so until then, have a good rest of your week. Stay safe. Drink some water. Uh, loosen those shoulders. Uh, you know, probably still wear a mask. You know, vaccinate. Uh, and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. 
head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us, and remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. We gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com where you'll find other great shows like Asians Represent. Asians Represent celebrates Asian creators and diversity in the gaming community. Join hosts Agatha Chain and Daniel Kwan as they discuss gaming genre, and representation with their guests, and occasionally argue with each other to the sound of Agatha's beloved Airhorn app. I did it. There we go. It's running. It's great. It's beautiful. I've got... Do we want to do like a, a secondary count just to make sure you can line these up? Oh, or gosh, no. you feel like you're going to be good? It'll be fine. Cool. Close enough. Uh, every time we do like a clap or or... Whatever, it just goes awry. <laughs> because I go like this. Yep. <laughs> or or I hit my mic or uh, Oh yeah, I've done that a lot too. Uh oh, yeah, I gotta I gotta best. turn down my gain a little bit though because yeah. I'm still getting used to the room. Right. Sure. It's brand new. Sure, um, sure, sure. It's like three weeks old or so. Yeah. And he keeps he keeps saying things like, Oh, you can tell the difference. Like it sounds terrible. And I'm like, I can't. <laughs> no, I do it to Dylan all the time. I'm He's like, lying. I'm like, yeah. Dylan, listen, I have completely remastered this entire episode. Listen to it. You can hear the difference. And Dylan has just kind of a point where he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I can. <laughs> That's yeah, great. Yeah, it sounds yeah. so good. You're yeah, so you're glad, glad you did that. You do the same thing I do when my child talks to me. He's like, mom, look at this really cool thing. Yeah, That's it's great. It's great. Look at that. So wow. Cool. Wow. Awesome. You <laughs> are so talented. So proud of man. you. Uh -huh. You're also very tall. <laughs> That's how Dylan treats me. Yeah. And I'm uh, like, thank you. <laughs> Yay. Happy. Yeah. Thank you Legitimately, for he told me that he had completely fixed some of my audio, sent me a new file, and then I double checked the file names. <laughs> yeah, too, to make sure it like. was completely <laughs> safe. <laughs> <laughs> But it was fixed. See, I like you're at the level of friendship, though, that I have with other people, too, where it's like, I, look, what what do you need today? Can you just, like, say <laughs> nice things about me for yes, a little bit? Like, that's what I, I really mean. need. Just, it's like, yep. tell me sense. how great I am. I can always, I always, I always know how needy Dylan <laughs> thinks I am because I'll just get some cat pictures. <laughs> I'm like, okay, thank you. <laughs> like, Look at these, go away. <laughs> I am busy. Here is the cat. Please stop talking to me. Uh. I have a paper to write. Can you just go like... <laughs> yeah, I'm in the middle of go something, play. so... Yeah, yeah. I accept it. <sighs> Look, I just, I think it's important to just know what the dynamic is, and then it's yeah, fine. It just, Yeah. Dylan, Jude says hi, because he's messaging me right now. He's like, I'm doing this. And I was like, I'm in the middle of something. And he's like, hi, Dylan. But, but <laughs> only, Don't for, only for Dylan. Listen, hey. <laughs> You're interrupting. Tell, tell him I said, hey, Jude, but don't make it bad. We're in the don't. middle of a podcast. No. Dylan, you don't even have children. <laughs> was that, that was, no. How was that joke that bad? Oh, I, I don't care. I enjoyed it.
All right. So, so half these outtakes I can't use. Yeah, it's fine. No, great. Great. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> delete, we're, delete, we're, delete. Just, we're just trying to get like, you know, like all out before your PG-13 yep. filter just, hits us. That's all. God, they just you... want us to know what we're in for. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Which is why Ryan will be playing the extremely not racist race of car. <laughs> <laughs> no, Spoil it's very spoilers. racist. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Spoiler, very there's racist. too many opportunities for bad puns. <laughs> spoiler. <laughs> Speaking of supplements, spoiler is one of the uh, race options for for rooms. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Spoiler is, is just a subclass of the racist <laughs> car. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's going to be for real. Guess this is yes, done. <laughs> that's definitely outtakes. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That and then my follow up question of if I go on a date with you, will you murder me? Yeah. Um, that's Which they always know. say, why would you ask that? And I say, why wouldn't I? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like worst case scenario, you say no and you think it's a weird question. We just move on. Best case scenario, right, you right. say yes and I leave. Right. Exactly. Well, yeah. I think honestly, the best case scenario was this one person that said, no, are you going to murder me? There you go. And I was like asking the right questions. No. Yeah. I, I think I believe I said, this I haven't decided yet. Good start. But <laughs> are you going to murder me? Depends. I said, well, I haven't met you yet. We'll Dark. see how it goes. <laughs> I would like the one who was, who, you know, who, who, who was like, just didn't expect the question. Well, yes, exactly. Honestly, I was thinking about it. I was. Yeah, but so like funny now, you brought it now up. that you asked, it feels <laughs> no, weird. Just, <laughs> now I can't because you're expecting it. Yeah, right? it's kind of on the table now. <laughs> Uh, you want to knock out this quickly last? before we actually start making characters? Yes. Maybe at some point. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I forgot that you did it wrong last time. <laughs> it, it threw you off. It. I totally. It yeah, honestly, it, it threw me off too. Uh, it wasn't right. It wasn't. It felt, you can't do it something felt, one way for four years and then like no warning. Just. I. I was very willy nilly. <laughs> I was in a a very silly mood. I feel like that's not unusual. You know, I feel like we come into this and we're either like super slap happy or we're both like way too tired. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, it's not unusual to click that record button. I see. I had it in my head too. And why? Why is that in my head? Because it's not, not unusual. Unusual to check your levels. <laughs> yeah. Just like that. <laughs> um, there is just like some real sweet bass happening outside, like oh, rattling my windows. Okay, all about that bass. All about that bass. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Thirty-one minutes for five minutes of content stopping. Okay, so I didn't get any extra good actual uh where's my character sheet i've got too many things open yeah. time to close all the stuff i'm not using your character sheet is now just a kelly's blue book page it could be a little nicer to me <laughs> i know even i couldn't say that with a straight face <laughs> <laughs> I will grant that you picked something somehow. Somehow you didn't make the most ridiculous character. No, not even close. Not even remotely. I play, I play an elephant named Johnny Sax who plays his trunk like a like a saxophone. It's not even close to the silliest thing. Yeah, pretty happy about that. Yep, I do like the car. I, I say. hate this so much. I know you do. It's the, the best. thing. Is like my only ask out of a D and D game usually is cohesion. Mm-hmm. Like for the it's, and this is purposeful. This is this is antagonism as much as possible. Yeah, and, and and then how can we pull it together in the end? I like it. It's fun. Yeah, it works. I, oh, but it is also everything you hate, which is the best. Which also just adds to my I joy. I mean, all of this really is about. It's not like me. I didn't warn you before. Exactly. It was like but we're like, gonna do. All nope. of this? You, you did? Nope. You did. But you underestimated us? I didn't look us? through each yes. of the splat books. So yes, I missed the cryptocurrency no, I know, in Carter's I know. book. 
Yeah, he also, I mean, he always <laughs> underestimates how much effort I'll put into it to make it hurt for him. He always underestimates that somehow. I know, but the whole point of this one was for it to be stupid. That's true. This was dare to be stupid, 100%. We were not trying to be serious at all. I mm. wouldn't invite a Brahm one no. to be serious. Why would you? It's no. like I would just sabotage it. It is important to have me here to sandbag things a little bit. Yeah. Because I have no capacity for whimsy. <laughs> he has none. <laughs> he really doesn't. It's because you're a scientist. On the show. It's for the week. He hates whimsy. <laughs> No, no. If this was serious, Dylan would literally have to be recording this with his knee on my neck and just be like, I've got him. Just go. He can't, he's, he's not near a mic for the next 30 minutes. Go. Quick while you can. Lock me to basement. <laughs> Nobody went with the pro wrestling book. <laughs> At least something went okay. My, uh, my PDF uh, reader. Uh, oh, it froze? It froze. Ooh. I was just, I scrolled one page too far and it just said, sorry, I'm out. <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> All right. My character was saved. I don't know where they're. Good. Okay, heck. Yeah. So I didn't lose my horrible stats. That would have been, that would have been a shame <laughs> to have to re-roll shame. all those. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Come back rolling threes. Uh-huh. So here's what we're going to do. Ryan, okay. you get what you can for usable bloopers, and I'm so sorry. And any of the non-usable bloopers, you just pass along to a ROM, and we'll throw them up on the uh, oh, yeah. on the Kill Every Monster. <laughs> we'll do a little bit of cross. We'll do a little bit of cross promotion. Yeah. All right, I, I will have. Yeah, I will have uh, a an outtakes uh, track and a I can't use this track. Mm -hmm. Got no. it. I'll just I can't pass use that. this track. Will be will be three hours and twenty seven minutes long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that they will yeah. live on somewhere. Yeah, hell yeah. All okay. right, now stop. we can press stop can on press those. Stop. E. Oh, I did it. I did it too. I almost forgot to click it. <laughs> that kind of day, huh? It really has been. Uh, it's fine. I feel you. All right, we're going to knock this out so fast, we'll have no room for outtakes. It'll be great. That'll be great. Uh, I've got food coming sometime soon, so. Yeah, that's fine. I will do the five count and we will go. All right. <laughs> Don't laugh at my janky fingers. No, no. I, I <laughs> am very impressed by your workaround. It's like, I can't can't do three. <laughs> you you, can, the you can do three. It's just a different still, three. Still it's doesn't, uh, yeah. Call two, which action? That might be the quickest we've ever done one of those. And all right. We do have a review, <laughs> by the way. Oh, we do? On um, Podcast Addict. Yes, we do. Oh. I can, I can, record, I can re read it out uh, when we get there. Okay, fine. Okay, so we got one. Okay. Um, hold on, I'm going to this <laughs> Is there a hammer thrush away? <laughs> Ooh. Oh, what, like 13 minutes. I did it. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even mess it up. Specifically. First not official uh, recording since I fixed my gain issues. I'm very excited. <laughs> okay. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> it just cracks me up because every time you're like, it's me, Ryan, and you can hear all of the problems with my audio. And I'm like, <laughs> I can't. Well, this sounds I familiar. <laughs> oh, it was peaking so much, though, all the time. I can't. But now it's I not. Said, and I then said he said, Dylan. I bet, he's like, we'll ask a ROM. I bet a ROM could hear it. I was like, that is like me saying, I can't tell the difference between a real and a fake diamond, but a jeweler could. Right, but if like, you ask the beers, I bet they could. Well, yeah. Right. Like, I was like, that's not, that's not a good. <laughs> and that's, then, not a that's my baseline. That's a fair assessment. I'll hear shit that doesn't, that doesn't <laughs> exist in the recording, but somehow still did around him. Right? That's not fair at all. Right? I send Dylan two clips all the time. I'm like, listen, Dylan. And you can hear it, and he'll be like, "Okay, no, you can't." <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's oh, what I'm saying. Hilarious. Brian is uh, like, "Can you tell how bad my audio is because there's a fan blowing no. four miles down the road?" <laughs> like, no, I can't. I'm pretty sure a dog farted. We have to re-record everything. <laughs> Start right, over. Just get rid of it. Meanwhile, I'm like, I put a pillow behind my monitor, so maybe that'll help something. It probably won't. But. It Before does a little the, bit. Uh, recording Doesn't. earlier today, I. 
shut the door to my office and I was like, yeah, that sounds more echoey. Open the door. Hopefully that doesn't fuck up anything. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like those are like, those are my uh, only two adjustments. I was like, is the door open? Is the door closed? It just, it just I means the curtains. Yeah. More, more post-processing and that's fine. Yeah. I mean, it's still listenable. Yeah, it's fine. Cause I'm not redecorating my house. It's true. All right, we can do our five count, and then Ryan can laugh at me because I can't actually count with my fingers anymore. No, I I, I laugh because that's you impressive. What you do? At me. I, no, I was I was like, wow, that's that's actually really great. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, I will you do my five count. You laughed at her during your explanation about how you were laughing at her. I just want to point that out. <laughs> I was laughing at myself, just to be on the record about okay, it. Okay, well, I'm podcast. gonna count now so that we can record a podcast. <laughs> Delete, delete, delete. Next question. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've got a cat intrusion. That's okay. I have okay. to find something horrible to mail to his kid. To look how sweet they're being. That's okay. Hey, buddy. This is this is, is Mr. Peaches. Oh, Mr. Peaches. He is Hi. 16 years old. Oh, uh, Mrs. Oh, Miss. Wait, sorry, Mr. 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 Peaches. Mr. Peaches. Well, hello, Mr. He does intrude every so often. He never makes any noise yeah. or anything, though. He's just, no. like, there. Like, he I never, never hear he, him yeah. even when he comes yeah. in. He never made he's, it through doctor school, so we couldn't call him Dr. Peaches. Sure, he's not yeah, Dr. Fair. Peaches, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. Didn't get the degree. MD yeah. Peaches. Yeah. MD. <laughs> Bachelor's Peaches. <laughs> Do Dr. Peaches, MD. Now you refer to people. I dropped out of high school. Like, I know it's something. Anywho. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I know Dylan just hurls that cat. <laughs> he's like, picks it up. He's like, go over there. That was great. It was just She's like fine. this one handed, like, scoop. Like, that was, yep. a, that was a very practiced motion, is what I liked yeah, about it. It was just no, like somebody is... who's done that a lot. <laughs> She's lovely. I know she'll land on her feet, but she's purring and she'll get at the microphone. Ben. Yep. There's, Loud, there's worse, worse sounds to have, yeah. like, you know, all uh -huh. of our chewing earlier. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> Annie Riff's table. Oh, come on now. <laughs> Just because Riff is an unplayable game, not because of the people. You've, you've oh, activated come on Ryan's now. trap card. <laughs> you've activated my Palladium trap card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, let, me, let me show you my cube full of Palladium books. Yeah, down here. I'm trying to think of like you trying to run this game with Riffs and my brain just broke. Because I'm like, it I don't sleep in work in two weeks to record. Game We're fine in Riffs. This this is is game. These are probably character classes in Rifts, in Rifts. RCCs, True. OCCs, what have you. It doesn't matter. It's going to happen. Yep. I want some Glitter Boy armor where the trunk is my real gun. Oh, God. <laughs> sure. Done. <laughs> Hell yeah. Honestly, more workable than this party in a D&D &D game. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. Portals open all the time in Rifts. The whole game's based around that. Anything yeah. you want could just fall out. And then yep. there it is. Right, exactly. All right, we Let's can stop. we can hit that stop button right now. There we yeah. go. Okay. Hey, yeah. Oh wait, that was that was that wasn't stop. Oh, that was so exciting! That was two clickies in one day. Two clickies in one day. Is it double clicky one. day? Double clicky day. Double clicky day. Yeah. All right. Uh, series fifty dot three cold open. Uh, let's let's get right okay. into that. Action. <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, like that. Uh, okay. Pause for drama, but also so it's easy to edit. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! To recording.